Okay, all right. Uh, first and foremost, of course, I give all praises to the Most High God. In the name of His Son, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's your brother, Chief Priest Al Azar, lawyer, aka the Guru, the Hebrew of the Sakari. Um, and tonight we got a real special treat. We're gonna engage in the discussion myself and the brother Isaac. Man, um, his brother Isaac is a brother who has um, a very interesting story and background, um, and a, and a witness of the works of the Most High God. Um, so. I want to, um, I don't want to stretch this out. I want to give this brother uh, a pristine opportunity to really explain him, his journey, his path um, to Christ and things of that nature. Um, you know, what he's went through in his life, because um, it's important that we get this message out because there's so many of our brothers who are, you know, um, in these streets and, and living wrong. And it's important for them to have examples of brothers who come from the same upbringing, the same background. And, and in a lot of instances, even worse, and was able to come out of that and, and give their lives over to uh, the Most High God. It's very important to understand that. So I want to make sure this brother has an ample amount of time to be able to articulate his point and get people to understand where he's coming from. And uh, then he's going to allow me to do the same thing because we both have um, different audiences we're bringing to the table. And of course, there's going to be people who have never heard of either of us or aren't too familiar with either way. We're going to watch this video even now live or later and um, get familiarized. We want to make sure that everybody has a pristine opportunity um, to get an understanding on both of our backgrounds before we even begin engaging in the debate through the Spirit of the Most High. So um, I definitely want to give this brother Isaac um, a, a powerful, um, a powerful opportunity to do this. And, and you know, this is a brother. Um, he's been. We've been. You know, I've been seeing him on a comment board for months. I wasn't too familiar with I thought he was just some crazy, crazy guy on the comic books. And I'm, then I start looking like, wait a minute. Okay, okay, cool. This brother's all right, you know. So um, I'm happy and I, I give praise to the most honor name and son that we're able to uh, to do this. Um, so without any further ado, I want to let this brother Isaac go ahead and take over. Go ahead, my brother. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that intro. And, uh, you know, it's all, it's all for the Lord, man. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity especially on, on your platform. I know you guys got a lot of followers, man. I've been following you guys for, like you said, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I just wanted an opportunity to, to uh, you know, to, to, to say what uh, I believe is, you know, from my upbringing and my faith as opposed to your guys's. And, you know what I mean? Let people, you know, decide whatever, you know? So uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go try to go real, uh, as, as quick as possible so we can get this out the way but i do want to be a little um i guess concise with some of the things because a lot of people they they the only thing they probably seen is like my street gangs video but there was a lot of things that were cut off or edited you know for uh, i guess time purposes but I'm gonna go ahead and just start off you know i, I started off as a gang member uh and i started back into my neighborhood at nine years old i'm from rosemead south san gabriel uh, from a neighborhood called uh, Lomas, and uh, that's basically all I've known, man, all my life. That's you know, my mom moved from East LA to Rose to Monterey Park, then to Rosemead when I um at that age, uh, to keep me away from gangs, and you know, I it didn't work out that way, you know. What I mean, that, that's not what God's plan was for me, so um, you know, and, and I give thanks to God now because uh, you know, He's opened a, a door of opportunity for me to uh, preach the gospel, man, to use my life for, for the benefit of. of of others man you know so uh so anyways uh, i started you know early juvenile hall, uh juvenile halls camps placements all that stuff and i actually i first heard the gospel man when i was really young um you know and and i you know i i uh i believe i had a true conversion man at a young age because of uh I, I already knew i was a sinner man i knew i needed help man and, and uh so i i i uh you know what people call as being born again or, or accepting Christ or however you want to put it. But I, I repented, man, of my sins. And I, I asked, you know, uh, uh, the Lord into my life, man. And, um, and I believe he did come into my life. But I strayed, man, for the rest of my life. From that point forward, I pretty much strayed. I was, I was living in a backslidden state up until uh, recently, man. Up to, up to, like, I say, like, 2008, more or less. And I'll, I'll get to that right now. But, um. So, you know, um, uh, I developed at a young age a, a love for reading. I started reading books, man, and, and, and I've always had a love for reading, man. So um, fast forward up to uh, to the year 2000, man, I, I was, um, I started waking up, 
I started waking up to a lot of things in the world, man. Like the way the, the, the world set up, you know, the way uh, it's controlled, man, by certain people and certain families. And and I started waking up, man, and I was heavily influenced uh, mainly, especially by uh, Tupac, you know, Tupac Shakur, man. He was a, a deep influence in my life, man. And uh, uh, actually, I, he he mentioned God in a lot of his music, man. And I, I was influenced in a negative way too, man, in a gangbanging type of way you know i'm sure you could relate to that but uh so um i i i was i was heavily influenced man by that and and, and um in 2003 i actually reached a point man where i want to commit suicide man i actually had a gun to my head man i had a nine millimeter to my head man i was i was living a you know you know the lifestyle man i was i was out there 100 percent fully with it man and, and uh and it was just heavy on my soul man a lot of that stuff you can't even put it into words, man. But it was it was heavy on my soul, and I, I wanted to just end it, man. So I had a gun to my head, and uh, this song was playing in the background, man. I had my laptop, and I wasn't really even tripping on that. I I, I was I was really just focusing on how I'm gonna do it, man, and trying to gain the courage to do it. So the last thing I was thinking about was my mom, man. She's the only one that really, really, really showed me true love, man, in my life, man, and and my sister too, man. They were both there for me. Uh, through my gang banging days, man. So this song was playing, man. Thugs Mansion, and uh, the song, called, you know, it starts and it says, "I'm gonna read the, the lyrics, man." This and it happened exactly the way the song says, man. It says, "A place to spend my quiet nights. Time to unwind. So much pressure in this life of mine. I cry at times. I once contemplated suicide and would have tried, but when I held that nine, all I could see was my mama's eyes. No one knows my struggle. They only see the trouble. Boom! I had a nine to my head, man." And when those lyrics came out, boom, it was like, like I woke up. It was like the Lord said, hey, snap out of it, man. Like I woke up, man. And, and I really, truly believe, man, the Lord used that. Um, he literally used that to save my life, man. Because I was ready. I, I wasn't scared to, to die no more, man. I, wanted, I was just going to end it, man. It was easy. It was easy route for me, man. It, it was, I was already risking my life as it was, man. So anyways, that, that was a significant point in my life, man. And um, so... After that, um, fast forward a little bit, 2003, I really started waking up, man, like, like to the new world, new world order and all that stuff. I started reading books, man. Like, I'm talking about, like, uh, um, like religiously, man. Like, I used to get, like, 10, 15 books. I was in prison at this time. Like, 10, 15 books a month, man. I, anything I could get my hands on, man. All the David Icke books, the William Cooper, and I'm sure you, you're aware of all that stuff, man. The old pale horse, uh, all that stuff. And I started reading... Um, uh, uh, I started studying like all the major religions, Islam and Buddhism, Eastern religion, uh, uh, Hinduism, New Age, um, um, Edgar Casey. I read like like a hundred books on that on that guy. Reincarnation, all that stuff, man. Uh, Freemasonry, philosophy, Manly P. Hall, all that stuff. And I'm not uh, saying all this like to boast or nothing. I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this, man. The Lord was allowing me to to absorb all this stuff, man, so he could lead me to the truth, man, the truth of God's word, man, the truth of the gospel and of his word, man. That's where the truth is really at, man. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there, man, but it doesn't mean, and even if it is true, it doesn't mean it's that one truth that matters, man. So I'm, I'm sharing all that for, for, for a reason. So, um, uh, so anyways, um, uh, Shortly after that, I got arrested, man. Um, in 2003. Shortly, I had uh, after I had that little episode, I got arrested. In 2003. That's when I, I really started having uh, um waking up and all that. Um, so uh before before I end this 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 little testimony, I want to share uh you know something that's actually pretty significant in my life, man. And I did four years, 2003 to 2000. Eight. end of 2003 to 2008 i was released from doing uh four years man and you already know this because you see my, my my uh my interview on street gangs but exactly one month and a half after i got out man i was arrested for murder uh february 14th 2008 uh i was arrested for a murder for murdering uh uh i was alle alleged murdering allegedly murdering one of my older homeboys man from my neighborhood and i spent the next five years in that los angeles county jail man five years in that place man and uh 
you know, and, and five of those years, I rep, uh, well, about three and a half of those years, I represented myself as a proper litigant, man. I represented myself as my own attorney, not because I wanted to, but because the attorneys I had, they wanted to see me doing life, man. You know the system, man. They, they wanted, they did not want me out, man. Whether I did the crime or not, they don't care about that stuff, man. If, if you're a gang member, they know that if you didn't do this, you did something else. That automatic right? deal is there. We got exactly. 20, I got 20 to life. That's all I got. <laughs> exactly, bro. So that's how it is, man. So I had to represent myself, man. It was just the Lord, man, giving me wisdom, giving me strength, you know, leading me, you know, and, and all that. So um, during these these five years, old man, I was I was in a single cell for most of the time. I was in high power, 1750. And even in the pro proof module, I was a single cell. So I used to, uh, that's why I started developing my, my, my relationship with the Lord. I asked the Lord, man, to really, really show me, man, his truth. I didn't understand the Bible before, man. I read all this other stuff, but I could not understand the Bible, man. You know, I believed in it. I took it by faith, but I didn't know, like, nothing about it, man. I didn't know the doctrines. I didn't know none of that stuff, man. So um, I started digging into scriptures, man, and, and and in there, I didn't have nothing else, man. But but the Holy Spirit and my Bible, man, the same Bible I have right now, man, you know, I, I believe... You know, I stick more to the King James Version like you guys, but this is a new King James Version, you know. But I use both, man, in my studies, but the Lord spoke to me through this this Bible, man. All the other translations, I am with that. And we'll probably get to that later, man. I, I am with the, the newer translations, man. They, 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 they take away from God's Word, man. So anyways, um, I start digging the Scripture, and I really pray to the Lord. Man. I'm talking about, like, with even tears in my eyes sometimes, man, and tears in my heart. Like, Lord, show me the truth, man. Show me the truth. So... He started showing me the truth, man. And I would come to the scriptures with things that I didn't understand. And I would I would literally, like I said, I would cry over this stuff because I didn't have the internet. I didn't have no pastors influencing me. I didn't know none of that stuff. Like you guys, I I I I subscribe to the same belief, man. There's a lot of pastors out there that are totally misleading people, man. They're all about the money. They're all about uh all this this this. Just stuff of, that's not of the Lord, man. It, there, there's an apostasy going on, and I, I'm 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 100 well well aware of that, man. You know, so so um, you know that's 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 something that's significant. So so uh, fast forward, man. Um, to um, four years into my into my uh uh my fighting my murder case, I actually got convicted. You already know this, but for the viewers' sake. I got convicted of this murder, man. I went to trial, CCB court, man, right there in downtown LA. And I got convicted by a 12 person jury, man. They convicted me, but they convicted me with insufficient evidence, man. But uh, not even a year later, man, about nine months later, man, by the grace of God, man, the, the undeserved, unmerited grace of God, man, by a miracle, my conviction was overturned, man. It was overturned, and uh, and then a couple months later, boom, he cracked them doors open, man. All for his honor, for his glory, man. He preserved my life, not only in the streets when I was gangbanging, but all the way up till now, man. And, and I'm here to testify that God is real. He's a miracle-working God, man. And as long as you're walking with him, man, he, he, he can do anything, man. He can do whatever he wants. He, can, he chooses the worst of us, man. He chooses the worst of us. I know a lot of you guys... Israelites, Hebrew Israelites come from similar backgrounds, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very well aware of that, man. And, and uh, you know, a lot of Christians too, man. They, they, they come from that, from that kind of lifestyle, man. And God, God chooses us for His, for His glory, so He can show His power, man. That, that's why He does that. So, um, so, so this, this is what happened, man. And, and, uh, and I got out. I went back to my hood, man. And, and, and you won't believe it, man. But I started falling back to my old self, man. And the Lord allowed that, but a hundred days later, almost a hundred days later, I just surrendered, man. I surrendered, and I went into a, a Victory Outreach Men's Home in, in the in the in Brawley, California, man, in the desert, Prill Valley, man, in the in the desert, man. And uh, and so I ended up there. I stayed there about a year, year, year and a half, man. I graduated, brought my girl over, and I met my girl, man, when uh, when I was in jail. I met her when I was in jail, man. The Lord brought us together. We got married, and we, I just had my first son, man. He, he just turned one year old, little Isaac, Gabriel Pedroza, man. And uh, you know, I just, I just wanted. Uh, it's very important that I share that, man, because, because, uh, man, it's this is all a miracle, man. I shouldn't even be here, man. I should not even be here. So, 
Um, uh, last thing I want to share about about all this is is uh, I started studying when I got out when I was in the home and all that. I started studying um, the Word of God more. I started going to school. I, I just graduated last year, man, right there at the uh, right next to the Staples Center. I don't know what it's called, the Civic Center or something, or the Convention Center. Uh, I graduated from a Victory Education Training Institute, which is you know what you go to to get certified to be a, a licensed minister, man. And I'm sharing this. Not to boast nothing, but so that people know that I'm not just some dude that just, you know what I mean? I, I just want to debate people. Or I want to get fame. Nah, man. I, I, I take this seriously, man. The, the word of God, man, got to take it serious, man. You know, and and, uh, and if he's chosen you to, to preach, man, you know, we, we got to, you know, got to take it seriously. And, and that's what I've done, man. You know, so, so um, you know, uh, uh, that's, that's pretty much um, everything as, as far as that. But I do want to share some, some, uh, I want to concede to some things, um, so that we don't even, we don't even have to deal with nothing there. Cause, cause, and, and you'll probably be surprised, but I'm, I'm going to just share a few things. I believe the original Hebrew people, man, were black, just like you guys, or, uh, people of color too, man. And, and I also believe that there were people of all different colors, man, not just black. And it, that's what I believe based on my research. I've, I've. I used to I used to dig into this when I was in jail, man. So I already knew, you know, this stuff, man. And, and uh, a lot of people that don't know you know, that they argue this, they're not doing the research. They just want to argue. They just, you know what I mean? Or or I don't know what it is, man. But 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 uh, I'm not. That's not something that I even argue, man. Um, so that would mean Jesus, if he wasn't black, he was at least person of color, man. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and so that's that's my belief. I don't believe in that that fake depiction of Jesus, man. I know you guys, you know, the, uh, you guys put up the, the Caesar uh, Borgia and all that. Like, that that does do something to people mentally, man. Psychologically, it really does affect people, man. And so I don't, that's not a, a, a mental image I have, man. When I pray to my Lord, I worship him in spirit and in truth, man. You know, and, and in spirit, man. God is also his he, spirit, man. He came and he became man in the flesh, man, but he's spirit. So uh, that's that's something I want to get out the way, Um and I also understand, like, there's like a deep-seated resentment, man, that that uh, we kind of have, and I had it for a long time. I'm probably still breaking free from some of that, man. But but uh, <laughs> it, it, we get it, you know, because of the slavery, of course, you know, black slave, and and what what you know what was done to our people, man. Like my people, for example, Mexicans, man. Come on, they they slaughtered our people, man. They raped our our, our women. They they you know what I'm saying? All this, this, this is all true history, man. You know, they don't teach a lot of this stuff in the schools, man. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, so, and I was, I considered myself for a long period, man, from that 2003 or 2000 period all the way up to like, I started, the Lord really started working in my heart. I considered myself like a revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I was, I was, uh, you guys are like that, man. Like you guys are kind of like, like that revolutionary. I was, I had that, I had that, man. So I, fully understand that man I, I know what that is man and, and it does it, it, it comes from a, a a a deeply rooted man a deeply rooted thing that some people they don't even know it man but but it it, it really does happen i used I'm, I'm gonna use this word i try not to use it but i used to kind of really hate white people bro like i did man because i know who runs the world man the, 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 the people that run the world they just happen to be white, man. And I'm not speaking. I want to be very clear. I am not speaking bad about white people. I love white people, man. And and I do. I know you guys You guys have a different belief. But <laughs> but I want to make it clear, man. Uh, I only believe it's a certain percentage. They just happen to be white. That, that they are ruling the world, man. And the Zionists and all these people, the Rothschilds and all that stuff, man. That We could go for hours with that stuff, man. But, but um, you know, me personally, man... Uh, I'm a Christian. I believe that the Lord came for everybody, man. You know, that's, that's, and we're going to get into all that. Um, but I want to make it clear, man. But, but I did have that, that, that hatred, man. I did have that. So I, I could understand that, you know, and I'm not even mad at some people for, for, for having that, man. I, I could understand it, man. Um, but, uh, so I, I really wanted to get that out the way. Um, uh, so I also believe you know, uh, I mentioned this earlier that for the uh, the church, 
uh, here in America, especially the, the church, the, the evangelical church, um, there's a great percentage, man, that I believe, like I said, that they've strayed, man. They've strayed from, from, from uh, the, 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 the word of God, man, from, from, from the doctrines of, of the word of God. And it's like about sensationalism kind of now. It's like kind of like a feel good thing. And, and you know what I mean? And they don't even really teach doctrine, man. They, they don't teach doctrine. They don't, they, they, they compromise, you know what I mean? Compromise like with, uh, with sin. There's, there's, there's denominations, there's whole denominations that they accept. Uh, and this is not a shot at, at homosexuals, man. Cause I believe homosexuals can be saved that Jesus died for them too. But I, 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 there's the denominations, man, that they pastors, man, they, they have pastors that are open homosexuals, bro. So, so come on, man. The Bible is very clear. You know what I mean about that, man? Like, come on, you know? So, you know, and you know, I've heard you uh, actually preach about this, this oneness thing now that nowadays, oh, we're all one and, and it's all about love. Nah, man. You know what I mean? We're called, the Israel Israelites were, were called out to be a holy nation, man. And I believe the church also uh, is, 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 is called the same thing, man. It, 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 they're called out to be uh holy man to, they're, they're, they're supposed to be separated from the world man we're not supposed to be one with everybody and i heard you talk about this early uh uh recently too about how um uh the lord came and confounded the languages they, the lord meant for for there to be uh separate nations and all that for his purpose man so he can raise up a nation so he can so they can be an example to the world man that's what i believe you know what i'm saying so that i wanted to get that out the way man and also uh they make it all about the money, man. Come on, man. You can't worship God and money, man. It, it says it very clear in God's word, and 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 um, and and God, uh, he's he's there. There's a lot of scriptures about that, man. And and, and money, money is a god, man. Anything could be a god, but money is a god. And some of these these churches and ministries, they make it all about the money, man. They make people actually even feel guilty if they don't give. They don't, you know, what I mean, fatten up their pockets. I do believe giving is biblical. Giving is biblical, man. That's a whole other issue. But giving, giving is supposed to be from a, 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 you know, it's supposed to be from 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 a, a, a cheerful heart, man. A cheerful giver, and and it's to 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 uh, you know, for the work of the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? But but some people they blur the lines and they they you know what I mean? No, no, no. Just give me, give me, give me. Nah, man. And that's not cool, man. That that's of the devil, man. I believe it's for the devil. We can turn on the TV right now and see see a bunch of these fake. Uh, 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 whatever the hell they, they call themselves, man. I, you know what I mean? I don't even, I don't even want to use a name for them. They're, they're heretics, man. They use the word of God, man, for their dishonest game, man. They say, oh, if you give us this seed, this $165 seed, you know what I mean? You're going to get this miracle. Come on, man. That's not from the Bible, man. That's straight from hell. So I, I want to be clear, man, so everybody could know, man, that, 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 uh, you know what I mean? There are real, uh, Christians, man, that are, that that are hit to a lot of this stuff, man, and that that they don't subscribe to none of that stuff, man. And I'm one of them. You know what I'm saying? I used to believe a certain way, and God has corrected me as I in my growth, man. In the Bible, He's corrected me. I used to believe certain things. Nah, man, and and God corrects those whom He loves. So I had to accept the correction. It doesn't feel good when you get corrected, but hey, you gotta accept it, man. So so uh, that pretty much. I know it was kind of long, man, but I I needed to get that out so so that the the viewers they know that that uh you know what I mean I'm not just some dude, man. That you know I just you know what I'm saying I want to get that out the way first, man. So I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, definitely, perfect, perfect. All right, I'll uh I'll get into my intro, man. Um, of course, again, I got to give all praises to the Most High, uh, God Yahweh, the name of His Son Yahweh Shai. Um, uh. My my upbringing, you know, kind of kind of similar to um kind of similar to this brother. My um my four parents was uh you know immigrants they immigrants that came from Haiti uh into America. My um my grandfather actually went on a run for for a murder. Um he he murdered a white man at a swimming hole, which I know a lot in the news you see a lot of controversy with these white people calling the police on people of color at swimming pools. And that's something that's been going on in this nation for a while, definitely the last century, conflicts at, over swimming pools. Um, so my, my grandfather actually got in a confrontation 
at a swimming pool where he murdered a so-called white man and ended up having to go on a run. Um, when he to go on a run, he joined the armed services, joined the United States Army. Um, they ended up stationed him in France, where I have family now. Uh, my uncles come from there, but then ultimately they got stationed in a at a Fort Lewis in, in the state of Washington. All right, so um, my my father um, is from there. He met my mother um, during the club scene when they was young, late '80s, things of that nature. Um, and you know they ended up having me. They moved me to an area that's known in the Pacific Northwest as the Hilltop, of Tacoma, Washington. The Hilltop was like the black epicenter for the Pacific Northwest. Everybody who was coming north from either the south, from California, and things of that nature was all predominantly coming to the area known as the Hilltop. It has a lot of um, historical value as far as the region goes for black culture. Black leaders like Ernest S. Brazil even had race riots in the 70s, things of that nature. Um, but in the mid 80s, once crack was booming and a lot of guys from LA was trying to expand that uh, their crack distribution network, a lot of them went up that five freeway and some of the main stops were Portland, Tacoma, and Seattle. So the majority of those who were coming into Tacoma were coming into the hilltop. Um, and you had a lot of those individuals, a lot of Crips that was coming up there and um, eventually their own branches of, of respective Crip gangs and blood gangs were started in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Um, so when I'm coming up in the 90s, a decade, decade and a half later, I'm a young dude, um, you know, uh, I don't have I don't have any big brothers, I don't have a large family, anything like that. And I'm influenced by the older guys I see on the street. So eventually they, um, you know, they lured me into uh, into the, the gang life. Um, at a, at a, I would say like around the same time as this brother, about nine years old, I'm lured into the gang life. I'm allured by it. I'm, um, you know, I'm into it. You know, I, I grew up as far as my my um, religious upbringing. I grew up Catholic, um, and I always kind of had like a a resentment towards the white guy on the cross. I would always see in, in the cathedral. That was always something that I always had a huge disconnect with, because um, I had like the brother spoke about that same kind of resentment. Um, because even even um, even going to school, because a lot of people, the people that are familiar, my mother is actually white of Irish descent, and a lot of people will say, "Well, how can you have this resentment? You're half white, etc." But even going to school young, we 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 dealt with this racism, you know what I mean, from these white kids as early as preschool, as kindergarten, nigger, and all these things. They're getting thrown around, you know. So there's a clear distinction there, and you know they they're given that energy, so that resentment is built, and then you learn even more about history. You know, when I sit around elders and, you know, people like my grandparents who came up during the time of Jim Crow and things of that nature, and that resentment builds. So I, I've always resented that white image that, you know, we were bound to, were genuflecting to. And, you know, when you, you come up in the Catholic faith, the Catholic Church is something that's very ritualistic. So from the very time you enter the cathedral, you're already giving venerations to the, to the white man on the cross instantly. You're doing the sign of the cross. Then before you get to the pew, you got to kneel and do it again. Look at him, do it again. You got to, you know what I mean? It's all, the whole situation is just all um, rituals paying homage to this white dude on his cross. And that always conflicted me. Um, so th those combination of things, I end up moving to California probably around the age of 12, moved to LA, Orange County, San Diego, and I live all up and down. Um, Southern California, um, and I just kind of continued off into, you know, the street life and things of that nature. Um, and it was something that I, I, I took to, and it's something that, in all honesty, I, I had an addiction to. Um, it's a lot of people now who are classifying street addiction, and it's kind of like a newer thing that's coming up, but it's something that's very real, because I was never somebody, I never drank, I never did any drugs, but as far as just the action, um, of the streets, it was something that I was addicted to. It was something that was a very hard habit to break. So by the time I'm 17, I'm coming up on 10 years ago now, when I'm 17, I, I get on World Star Hip Hop and I see a video of, uh, and, and in the video, they got a picture of the white Jesus with the horns on the same picture that people see us now with. Um, I see that picture and I click on a video because I always innately kind of knew I had that resentment, like that's not right, but I, I don't know how to prove it. Go to church all these years, but never really open that Bible. So I said, it's not true, but I can't prove it. So I see that and I said, well, maybe these guys can prove it. I click on the video and I see um, uh, Israelite elders from the, the Great Millstone Camp 
just going through the full, you know, all the Israelite basics with a Colombian brother. Um, and I was, I was sold. I was sold from that point because I felt like it, it just made so many things make sense. Um, my pops used to always tell me um, about Latin brothers and Native American brothers. He would essentially tell me that these are our brothers as well, or he would he would use the terminology they are niggas too. That's the terminology that, that he would use. <laughs> but but I, I knew what he meant by that. We're all the same because you know my, my my pops has traveled. He Colombia, Puerto Rico. He's been everywhere. So he said when I go to all these countries and all these places, we all. He said I see guys that look like you. You know, pointing to me, and I'm his son. So if 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 they look like how I look, and I'm his son, then we all must be related, right? So um, he he had always kind of pushed that in. So when I'm hearing brothers break it down, black Hispanics, Native Indians, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's all kind of clicking for me. Um, so from that point, I began to change my life. Um, but it probably took a solid. It took about a solid two and a half years for me to fully um, dedicate myself. I began to keep the laws and statutes and commandments, but I was still off into the streets in a lot of ways. Um, still selling drugs, things of that nature. So I, I, I finally started to teach on the streets with a group of brothers. And, and at that point, I finally decided I had just read up. I had an ounce of work and I put it in the garbage. I said, I can't do this no more. I can't live like this no more. This is I, I can't continually contribute to the downfall of my people like this. It doesn't even make any sense. So I was able to do that and, and kind of conquer that hurdle. So I, I went hard for about six months with those brothers that was back up in the state of Washington. But after six months, the most I had it to where I was back down to California. So, you know, when I was in Washington, I, I was able to kind of disconnect myself from a lot of, of people um, who were what you would call bad influences or street influences at that time, because I didn't have as many there because I had left it at such a young age. And I had really kind of, you know, um, really started my street career really in California. So when I got back to California, um, I was I was doing my thing. I was preaching the word of God and things of that nature. But six days a week outside of that, I was in the streets. I was with the homies still, you know, and um, eventually that led to me catching a case. Um, and well, I, the, the thing happened, in, the incident happened in April of 2012, but I didn't end up going to jail for it until January of 2013. So I had to sit down. And I thank the most high for that time where, I, where he sat me down because it, it really it really put me there to where he was showing me you can't ain't no plan no more. You can't keep jumping. I always say I wasn't playing the fence. I was I was jumping on each side of the fence. You know what I mean? Damn playing it. I'm jumping all the way in the yard, back out the yard. You know what I mean? And he basically let me know you ain't going to be able to do that no more. It's going to be one thing or the other. And he showed me if you, if you want to keep in the street life, this in and out of county jail and to the pen, and this is what this is all it is. I'm seeing all kind of dudes, old and young. I remember me and the homies used to always, uh, uh, me and my celly used to always uh, 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 make this joke, man, about the <clears throat> the young Southsiders coming in because hey, dog, I just signed for five and shit. Like damn, he's, <laughs> like it's cool. Like nigga, you just like that's five years gone. That ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? And it's like. I don't want I don't want that. I don't want to be doing five years of up top. Like that's that's not where it's at. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I really just sat back and reflected and um really just, you know, got my got my Bible and really just man, I, I remember because like like you were saying, when, when you incarcerated, you don't got no internet, you don't have nothing. So all the oh, I don't remember that scripture. Let me try to keyword it, find it. All that's out the window. So I literally had to sit down and read this thing. And I, I especially focus on the New Testament. I read the whole New Testament because there was a lot of like scriptures of, of especially of Paul that I have forgot. It slipped my mind. So I was like, man, I got to find him. So I just re had to read the whole book and I was able to find so many powerful verses. But this was a verse that I found that spoke to most of me during my incarceration. This is uh, 1 Timothy 1 and I'm going to start at 12. He says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, uh, putting me in the, into the ministry. So he's thinking he's thanking the most high through his son for enabling him to put him in the ministry. It says, who has before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And, and that's the thing about it, that, 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 that layer of hypocrisy that 
a lot of people who are in the streets don't have that a lot of other people do have is that when you in the streets you know you're living wrong there's not you're not just the, you know what i mean you know damn well everything i'm doing <laughs> this is dead wrong you know so we are not denying it we are the chief of the center right it says who i am chief verse 16 how be it for this cause because we are the chief of sinners i obtain mercy that it that in me first jesus christ might shoot forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting so we could be that example and show brothers or sisters who come from the same walk of life just because you did it i mean this brother like he just said he was getting ready to be gone forever and look at him how much time was you doing two to three you did a two to three and you figure you just a lost cause let's be serious now you can be on death row and not be a lost cause you know what yep, i mean yep. some people are more it had a, had a, a powerful voice from death row yep, you know what i mean yep. so it was scriptures like this that the most high guided me to during my incarceration that 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 really strengthened me and helped me in my walk and and, and as soon as i got out um i hit the ground running and I, and I signed the deal for the least amount of time i could get but my my lawyer um he advised me to not take that deal because he said you're going to get this felony you're going to have a strike you know how this works and, and we got to put you on a, a a gang injunction and things of that nature um but i said i'm not worried about that because i know once i get out i'm not playing around no more so even though the strike is quote unquote leaning over my head I know I've made a complete 180 in my life to where I've totally left the streets alone to where I'm not worried about catching strike two, catch, getting <laughs> striked out. You see what I'm saying? That That's not something I worry about because I put that faith um, in the most high. And then now look, as, as far as the gang injunction stuff go, now they're not even enforcing it in large part because of how constitutionally wrong it is to even put a gang injunction on some damn body. You know what I mean? So. It's beautiful that we were able to put that faith in, but I, but I, I got out of incarceration uh, later in, in 2013, and from thence, you know, we just been pushing the word, and now we five years later, and we're here. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's a beautiful thing, and it all glory goes to the Most High God, in the name of His Son. Um, you know, and, and now we I've been able to cross paths with this brother, um, and uh, you know now. The most high has it to where we 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 at this time and that's that's how it works because like i said this brother i've been seeing him on the comments for a long time not even realizing <laughs> i've watched this dude street gangs interview and was like that was i was inspired by his interview because i said damn that's powerful for him to i mean there's there's a few people but there's a very few people who have gotten sentenced to life and are on the streets to tell about it. very few i one of my one of my og homies they sentenced him to life and it ended up they sentenced him to life for getting jumped by 20 people um and they ended up overturned so you know but some some brothers aren't that lucky and they'll get a life sentence on bs and they, they'll have to do it you know what i mean and they, they're in there so um it, it's important and i think the most side of you know we're able to have have this conversation um um but with that that's um that's uh that's that's my introduction and i, and I want to um, go ahead sorry. what do you have to can say, i brother? ask you a uh just uh to just for the viewers uh just a cut just a few questions just so they're aware like the people on my side yes sir on my end uh three three main things uh, uh okay so do you believe uh i already know the answer but do you believe anyone can be saved no i, b I believe salvation pertains exclusively to the Hebrew Israelites are who would be predominantly known today as blacks, Latinos, and Native Indians. Okay. Uh, also, uh, do you believe Jesus is God? Um, the Jesus is like God, God, like actually yeah. God, like the Most High God. No, I believe yeah. I believe He is a God, and there are there are gods that are subject to the Most High God, who is the Father. Um, I don't, but we don't believe in the the Trinity. Okay. Uh, last. Do you believe there's a he a literal heaven and hell? Um, we believe in a literal um, heaven as far as there is another realm of existence where the Father and the angels um, dwell. As far as a literal hell or place of torment, no, we don't subscribe to um, that okay. belief. We believe hell is something that's played out. Uh, either it's the grave or it's a, if you're living, it's a condition that you would live out on earth. 
All right. I just wanted to get that clear because so everybody knows, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, so uh go ahead. I, I don't know how you, you I got know. I got one question that the brother the brother has sent me just so we know. Um okay. do you have like a, a, a denomination of your church or or what exactly would you classify? Uh, me personally, bro, I don't I don't like to put titles on myself. Um I don't like to uh like say uh I'm a Calvinist or Armenian or or uh the church that the ministry that that I'm uh the Lord put me in they they do subscribe to the the denomination of um it's actually its own denomination Victory Outreach have you ever heard of Victory Outreach yeah of course yeah Victory Outreach yeah. does a lot of stuff in the community yeah it's actually uh they're actually their own denomination but um they do i guess they are considered i guess a uh, pentecostal because they believe in the, in the you know speaking in the power of tongues and and uh things of that nature but me personally i don't I, i'm not with all that oh i'm gonna i'm a pentecostal or i'm <laughs> this on that i'm i'm just a bible believing christian man that 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 i just i believe in the word of god i believe the word of god is infallible and i believe uh you know the doctrines of 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 the bible that that uh you know that the lord has taught me and i'm still learning man i'm still growing i'm still growing so i don't you know what i mean I, I don't say i'm i'm this or that but i don't i don't like to i don't like to say that because because uh you know once you say that people automatically boom like right now i mentioned pentecost you know what i mean that my boom right away people whatever people have against pentecostal they're gonna you know what i'm saying so um that that's why i choose that so go ahead uh yeah i mean that 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 was my only um uh on okay. that question so now i would say what would you what do you think we should start at? okay so i have uh since i guess i'm the one that kind of you know reached out to you and kind of called you out i guess you could say or whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying um i i, I put together um some things just what, what what's more important to that I believe is more important. Um, the most important things, like I said, the 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 color thing and and all that. I I, I do see your guys' viewpoint that is important for obvious reasons. But to me, the most important things is is the of course the salvation, the the uh, love, um, and the difference between Gentiles and and Israelites. So I kind of put together some stuff maybe we can you know and and if you want you can stop and ask me some stuff whatever Beautiful. but i so i have a uh i've seen you guys you use a uh, strong you use strong some quarters yeah yeah we use strong okay, strong for a lot okay of i i use strongs too uh and i also seen you use like blue letter bible sometimes yes it's i use that place. yeah i said okay so i'm just gonna kind of stick to that so we could be on the same page you know what i mean because there's a lot of stuff out there there's a lot of stuff out there and it doesn't mean that it's set in stone because it's you know what i mean but you know what i mean they, they are good resources you know yeah, they're good re exactly they're good resources. yeah okay so so first off my first question the first couple questions gonna be just general but then we'll get into some stuff um my first question would be um of course like uh the king james version of the bible you 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 guys pretty much believe that that uh it's reliable you know what i mean as far as yes sir right well, I will call okay. it most reliable the English translation. Okay. So how about I already know the answer, but how about other versions? <laughs> uh you know, there some of them it's it's sometimes I like to look at verses in as many versions as I can. Yeah. Just because the King James, the jargon is kind of old. You know, we don't use exactly, yeah. that, that language. But for the most part, King James would be most authoritative, but we also like to especially take a look at the greek the yep. hebrew the aramaic yes sir that's that's what i'm talking about right there okay so uh i i, I believe the same you know and i believe just for just for the viewers to know like me personally like i don't believe like the niv uh i believe it's butchered man like you already know you guys are hip on all that stuff man like some people call it the non-inspired version man <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because there's 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 completely like whole sections taken out of it, man. You know, uh, Acts eight thirty seven, uh, Mark sixteen nine through twenty, and 
you know, there's a lot of stuff that's taken out of it. So I didn't want to get that out the way. So, and me personally, um, just so everybody could know, I learned, like I said, this is still my old Bible, man. I had in prison. Uh, it's a new King James. And it's, you could see, man, it's like, it's been through riots. It's been through like all kinds of stuff, man. You know what I mean? But man, I still have it, man. And, and the Lord really, he taught me through that word, man. And, and I believe his spirit spoke to me through that word. So, um, but I use it, the King James version, man. I believe it's because it, where it came from, man. When you look at it, you look at the history, you know what I mean? From the Texas receptive, it came out of Antioch. It didn't come from Alexandria for the, a lot of the other manuscript came from and you know that that's a whole other uh topic man but uh so okay um uh my my next question uh okay so i had to ask you if the king james version you guys believe because there's there's something that you guys believe um uh okay the the word jesus okay you guys i know you guys uh say that it, that his name is uh, Yahweh Shai, I believe it's uh, Yeshua from the Old Testament. Um, Yeshua, the Hamashiach, the, the, the Messiah. So, um, but the, here's my thing that, that and I've had this, this especially in, even in some of the comments, like with some of your viewers and other websites I've been to, um, uh, you know, where, where they, you guys believe that, you know, there wasn't a J and, in the, in the, you know what I mean, and, and all that. But here's my thing is, if we change the, his name, you would have to change because it's in English. Because I believe it's there because it's a transliteration. It's in English. So you would have to change really like every word, you know, like that, that's what I believe. So I kind of want to, what do you, what do you got to say about that? Um, I, I don't have no problem using it. Some brothers do, uh, <laughs> but, but as far as salvation goes, we just emphasize it in, in, because of this, Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So that's what we emphasize it as far as salvation, i.e., if we're praying, that's why I say, you know, I give all praise to the most high in the name of his son, and I say Yahweh Bahashem, which means in the name of, and then Yahweh Shai. Um, it's, it's, it's important there, but, you know, sometimes you are, uh, you know, like we'll be teaching a brother, we'll be reading, he'll see Jesus Christ, and he'll say, Yahweh Shai, and I'll remind him, yeah. speaking, he'll say, I read verbatim. These people, they don't know that, so it's not a problem with saying that, because when we're saying Jesus Christ, people don't know none of these names. Yeah. They know exactly. Jesus is. So we'll let, we, you talk to them on that, you meet them there, you know, and then later on, but like you said, like if some people will, will, some Israelites will go overboard, and they'll just start saying everybody's name in Hebrew, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not as important. Moses, yeah. I gotta say Moses' name in the Hebrew. I'm not getting saved yeah. in Moses. You know what I'm exactly, saying? Exactly. Yeah. You know, when it comes to prayer, we just emphasize it especially okay. uh, in that in that regard. Yeah. Cause like me, well, I believe. I mean, the Lord, He already knew. Like me, He reached me through the language of English. Man, I'm I I'm, I speak Spanish and I speak English, and He used the English language like uh. Like you already know this, I'm, 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 you guys already are hip to all this, but like, just for the viewers, you know, um, like Greek, you know, Greek was used, it was, it was, it wasn't the only language used, of course, it was Hebrew and Ar Aramaic, but Greek was, um, from Alexander, it, it seemed like he was used, man, to kind of because the word, the the Bible was actually to be translated, the New Testament in Greek, you know what I'm saying? So, and then we have the Greek Septuagint which which um in the new testament the the apostles and jesus quoted from the septuagint you know what i'm saying so you know uh, uh you know that was just a little example but you know like english now is like prevalent language you know what i'm saying like throughout the world you know what i mean like in in uh uh where is it like uh in the, even like in the philippines in in, in places that it, it's like it's like a, a a language that's used universally now you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah okay yeah. so so just wanted to get that out the way. Uh, the my next question would be. Um, I already know you know the answer, but um, just so we can get to what you know the the main bulk of it is. Why did God curse Israel? God cursed Israel for disobeying the commandments of, of that He gave 
um, to us when we came out of uh, Egypt in the Exodus. Yes, sir. Okay, so so this is this is uh, kind of where we get into it, man. Because okay, uh, there's uh, you, you it's it was God ordained, pretty much, right? It yes. was God ordained. It was it was it was part of God's plan because He knows the beginning from the end, right? So he, if that was the vessel, if, if Esau or the Edomites or the white man, however, you know, um, by the way, just for the viewers, for, for the people that don't know my viewers, whoever's watching Edomite and Esau, Hebrew Israelites believe Esau and the Edomites are the white people, the Europeans of this world. Um, I personally, I don't believe that, but that's what they believe. So I'm going to refer to it as that. So uh, if Esau and the Edomites, um, they were God's chosen vessel, um, uh, why do Hebrew Israelites have so much, like, the hatred towards I, I already know we spoke about the, the deep-seated, because some of that can get mixed up. I, I think I've seen some people, because I'm like, man, I understand how they feel about them, man. Cause I, you know what I'm saying? I understand that, but I, at the same time, I don't want, I, like me, I don't think that we should, we should know, you know, that it's really, it's, 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 we know for sure this is who they are and that, you know what I mean? But, but, but just for the sake of argument, man, say they are, say they are the Edomites, the white man. Why do the Hebrew Israelites have that hatred if they were God's chosen vessel to, curse to uh basically take them into slavery and all that great great question uh and i'm gonna answer with this scripture this is zachariah 1 and 15 and it reads i am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease for i was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction uh now it says verse 16 therefore thus saith the lord i am returned to jerusalem with mercies my house shall be built in it saith the lord of hosts and and a line shall be stretched forth upon jerusalem so as we see in verse 15 the most high god is upset with the heathen and, and why it says because he was sore displeased or no because he was a little displeased with us and they helped forward the affliction so basically the nature of which they have afflicted and oppressed us has angered the most high so he is going to visit them even worse than he ever had visited us okay uh, let me read, let me read a scripture up. I'm going to read Romans 9, verse 20 through 24. And as I said, I'm reading from the New King James. I'm going to read some scriptures with the King James Version, but I'm going to, I feel more comfortable reading this. If there's like too much of a contract of a, of a, you know, um, we'll, we'll just, we'll go to the King James and you know what I'm saying? Okay. If there's. Because sometimes there are some words, man, that it's like you have to get down to it. You know what I'm saying? So 9, 20 through 24. But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it? Why have you made me like this? Who does, uh, I mean, sorry. Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So I'm reading, I read that because basically it's, it, it, it's like, okay, um, you know, God in his sovereign plan and his wisdom, he he were he had it all worked out already. He already knows what's gonna happen, how it's gonna go down. So um it's almost I feel this is what I feel as if uh I guess you guys or I'm just saying that when I say you guys, I mean I don't just mean like Sakari. I mean like the Hebrew Israelites. I know you guys differ on your 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 theology with certain camps, diff, different uh, I guess camps or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I would say um, it's like why 
why hold on to that if if you know it's it's not, what I'm trying to say is if you're gonna be mad at somebody, like why not be mad at God or at the most high because it's his plan. You understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. And um uh, in the case like what's being said here, like uh, uh Romans Romans nine, which is a, a beautiful chapter, like okay, like verse twenty-four, um even even us whom we have called, not of the Gentiles only, but also, not of the Jews only, but of the Gentiles. We start, like, verse 11, right? For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. It was said unto her, uh, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So the context of that is that God loves Jacob and God hates Esau. So we just want to love the evil and hate the good, so to speak. So knowing God hates them and why God hates them, we have that same hate. But continuing on to verse 14, what shall we say then? Is that unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Because like you said, it's a sovereign plan and it's his right. So when we see that he loved Jacob and hated Esau, he's showing you who he's going to have mercy on and who he's not going to have mercy on. Verse 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God who showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and I might and my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So basically the same reason Esau is being raised up is the same reason why Pharaoh was raised up, this great mighty yes, nation of people that God is just gonna come knock down for his glory. So that that that's kind of where it lies. And I think there's a little bit more. It says, therefore he uh therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will uh whom he will harden it. That will say unto thee, Why do ye he yet find fault with me? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O oh man, who art thou whom replies against God? Shall the thing forth saying that uh, he had formed it, why hast thou made me thus? So knowing that the vessel that dishonor in this context is Esau, we are going to treat him or have that dishonorable um, opinion towards him, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, just so you know, just so you can understand my uh, viewpoint on that, I guess I understand uh, completely. My only thing would be um because that's god that that's god saying he that that's that's god speaking right he's quoting um he's actually quoting uh, uh malachi right chapter one uh verse two and three so i would just say that that's that's the lord um that it's his right to love and hate where he wants you know what i'm saying that i i, I believe that but for us, it's different, and I'm. We're gonna get into that. For I, that's what I believe is for us. It's a little different. I'm gonna. We'll get into that a little bit later. But but this is this is a uh, uh, based on what what you read, uh, spe specifically nine uh, Romans nine thirteen, where he says Jacob I, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. So so if you truly believe that the white man are are the Edomites and and uh, and you are the Israelites then that would make them your brothers, correct? Biblically, I'm talking about biblically, they technically, they Esau is Israel's Jacob, which is now Israel, his brother, their brothers, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they were, they were brothers. Okay, so they're actually twin brothers, mm -hmm. right? Twin brothers, okay. So right now I wanna go to Deuteronomy 23, verse 7 and 8 mm -hmm. deuteronomy 23 verse 7 and 8 and uh i'm gonna just read uh you shall not abhor an edomite for he is your brother you shall not abhor an egyptian because you were in an alien you were an alien in his land the children of the third generation born to them may enter the assembly of the lord so what's your response to that that scripture or what are your guys' belief on that? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share my screen real quick so I could I could show you this. Okay. Wrong. Um, because that that's a scripture that has two major misconceptions in it, and um, the first thing is a poor because a lot of people think 
abhor is dealing with hatred, right? When we look at this word abhor, it's tayyab in the Hebrew, and it means to be abominable, do abominably, detest in a ritual or ethical sense. So it's talking about allowance to offer sacrifices in the temple. That's the first thing it's talking about. It's not talking about um, having any personal convictions towards anybody. Basically, certain nations were allowed to come and offer sacrifices at the temple of Israel, at the tabernacle of Israel um, yep. during that period of time. So what it's saying is that these people, though you may have issues with these people, they are technically allowed to come and offer a sacrifice. Do not count them as ritualistically abominable from having that ability. But then also we have the word Edomite um, here. This word that appears for Edomite in the Hebrew is not the same word that typically appears for Edomite um, throughout the Bible. And I'm going to show you an instance where it shows you that that's not what this is talking about. And this is uh, 2 Kings 16 and 6, and it says, at the time Risen, king of Syria, we know Risen in history was king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria, and Elab drove the Jews from Elab, and the Syrians came to Elab and dwelt there until this day. So it says, Risen, king of Syria, recovered Elab to Syria. He's the king of this particular place, and this Elab is being recovered to it. It's the same word for Edomite, right? So the question in lies, how is it that Syria is being called Edom? That doesn't make any sense. These are two different places. One is north of Israel. The other is south of Israel. Um, and the reason this comes is because when you study in the, uh, the Masoretic text, it's a clerical error because literally the length of the tail of the letter is the only thing that differentiates the word for Aram and Adwam or Edom in, in Syria, right? So as we see here, uh, I want to get this script out. I'm going to find it real quick. Raven, who was the brother of Rebecca, the mother of Israel, um, uh, <clears throat> was Assyrian, right? <clears throat> okay. And Laban, right here, this is the this is the point. So Laban said this, Genesis 29 and 15, and Laban said unto Jacob, because thou art my brother. So the people of Aram or the Syrians were also regarded as our brothers. And Laban said unto Jacob, because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for not? Tell me what uh, shall thy wages be. So we see a Syrian identifying Israel as his brother. And uh, as we can see, um, and Isaac, real quick, uh, Genesis 28 and 5. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> Laban is identified as a Syrian. We see this word also being translated as Syrian. Laban, the Syrian, identifies Jacob as his brother. And I got one more, it's Deuteronomy 26. Um, Deuteronomy 26 and 5. Yeah, Deuteronomy 26 and 5. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. So even Jacob was called a Syrian. Like certain people, um, they try to deny the existence of Israel in ancient Egypt pursuant to how the Bible tells it. And that's because on the walls of Egypt, when the 70 come in, they have that painting of Jacob and the, and the patriarchs actually going into Egypt. But they identify them as Syrians. Because, of course, Israel wasn't on the scene on the map as a nation of people. It wasn't but 70 people leaving out of the tent of Laban. So they identified us as Syrians, who are also a Semitic people and people kindred to us. But um, they're not Edomites. Um, and I want to get one more here in Deuteronomy 25, since we're right here in 19. And we have, to, we have to kind of make a critical analysis. If Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is telling us not to hate white people, but Deuteronomy 25, two chapters later, tells us this. Um during 25 and 19. Therefore, it shall be when the Lord thy God have given thee rest from all thy enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. And so it was commanded to Israel to blot out or to exterminate the people of Amalek who are Edomites. I'm going to um, where they at so I can show that. Um, uh, Amalek, son of Eliphaz, by his concubine Tim. Timnah, grandson of Esau, right? So these Amalekites are Edomites, um, a specific tribe of Edomites who the Most High had a, a very extreme uh, distaste for, and he commanded for them to be exterminated. Um, we see this play out later in Scripture when um, Saul, you have King Saul, 
is uh, commanded to do certain things by Samuel. And when he doesn't fulfill that, um, that actually is what gets him taken, he lose his throne and that throne be given to David that he didn't do that law, which would be to blot out Amalek. So just a quick recap, because I know we went over a lot. Um, Deuteronomy 23 and 7, the word of poor does not necessarily mean hate. The word for Edomite, also translated Syrian, that we see identified as the brothers of Israel, as well as the fact that two chapters later, we are being instructed to exterminate an entire group of Edomites. So that's what that's what our stance is. Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is actually in reference to not um, disallowing uh, 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 Syrians from offering sacrifices at the temple or tabernacle. That's what our stance on that is. So that's not actually. So for the record, you don't believe this scripture is talking about an actual Edomite. No, I believe it. I believe it's a reference to the Syrians, and it was a it was a. A clerical error on behalf okay. of, um, of the the Masoretes. Okay. All right. So um. So uh. So here in in, in Deuteronomy twenty three, the the Ammonites and the Moabites, right? They they were they were actually contrasted in verse three. Mm -hmm. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter the assembly. They were contrasted with the Edomite and the Egyptians. Yes, so, sir. so this is this is what I I find interesting though. So, and it's clear that they were they were con to to keep them away the the Moabites. So, what do you guys believe about Ruth? That Ruth was a Moabite, mm -hmm. and Ruth was actually King David's great grandmother. And she, and she was included in Christ's uh, genealogy. So what do you have to say about that? Um, well, it, it, it's just a misconception about what it means to enter into the congregation. Like I said, it, it's really just dealing with having the ability to come to that temple and be allowed to offer a sacrifice to the God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I, I kind of studied that out. But yeah, like some people think it means like just to be around Israelites or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah that's just, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm aware okay so do you believe uh so okay are moabites israelites no they're moabites okay so if ruth was a moabite and she was david's great grandmother how does that play in with your guys's theology oh uh, i mean basically what i'm gonna show you uh this is i'm gonna go to ezra real quick the book of ezra um right here because so, you believe you have to be a uh you guys just to be clear i, I really am, i'm not even sure of this but do you believe you have to be like a full no blooded? okay okay it's just about your lineage right so this is uh ezra 2 and um and 59 it says and these were they which went up from tel malah and tel harsa cherub adan and emer uh, but they could not shew their father's house and their seed whether they were of Israel. So how what determines whether or not you're of Israel is your lineage, your your seed. You know what I mean? So essentially, um, that's how you do it. So if like you have a grandmother that's not an Israelite, that would have no bearing upon your status um, from uh, receiving the inherited rights that an Israelite would be would be bestowed with. What did you read out of Ezra? I mean, uh, Ezra, Ezra book? Two, yeah, the book of Ezra 2 and 59. 2 and 59. Okay. All right. So, uh, so back to Israel and Esau being brothers. Okay. So you do, you, you do concede that they are brothers of the Israelites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, Jacob. I would say that Jacob, Jacob and um, Jacob and Esau were uh, were brothers. Um, and you know, you could you could kind of extend that. But as we see in Leviticus, matter of fact, let me just get it. Leviticus, um, the nineteenth chapter. You see here in Leviticus. Uh, 19 and uh, 18 it says thou shalt not avenge nor is this neighbor so like you i'm gonna start at 
17. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt, so the, the subject matter is brother. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So brother and neighbor are synonymous here. And not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear a grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So it's using brother, neighbor, and children of thy people uh, interchangeably, and it finishes, I am the Lord. So who we consider our brothers and our neighbors are the children of our people or fellow Israelites, pursuant to okay. Torah. Okay, so, uh, I mean, I, I guess I, I would disagree with that, uh, I guess, biblically, because Jacob and Esau were twin brothers. And yeah, they're they, they, they were twins, but also yeah. we remember in Genesis, it say what? Two nations, two people. Yeah, it was two nations, exactly. So those two nations, I would see them as brothers. So with that being said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to share these few scriptures. Um, and I'm going to try to just go real quick. First John uh, 3.15. Um, Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murder. No murder has eternal life abiding in him. First John uh, 420. Uh, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Or he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Uh, First John uh, 211. Um, but he who hates, and I, I know that you, you already made your point. You don't believe really that um you don't you don't acknowledge them as your brothers anymore based on the scriptures you, you read me so but i'm just reading these real quick um he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eye okay so and and here's here's the main thing if even if if uh if you deny that esau is your brother I want to read the scripture. The, the scripture declares that that uh, um, in Titus two, Titus two, uh, chapter eleven. Uh, I mean, chapter two. My bad. Titus chapter two, starting at verse eleven. It says, and all the way to uh, three, one, and seven. But I'm going to start at eleven. I'm going to come back to this, but I just want to read it on its context. Um, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works speak these things exhort and rebuke with all authority let no one despise you uh, going on to ch to uh, chapter three, verse verses one through seven, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But then the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Uh, two more scriptures. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So. I want to get uh, uh, I want to break this down a little bit, especially uh, verse 11, chapter Titus, chapter two, verse 11. So the word all in, in this in uh, verse 11. The word all is the Greek word. Pas, P.A.S. And that's strong G three, nine, five, six. Um, and. This scripture, the, I mean, this word. All it means this, at least this is the definition we get individually, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything, collectively, and some of all types. 
And then um, uh, the word used for men, it says, it says uh, the word used for men is the Greek word anthropos, which is G, uh, strong G444. And this word is the word, uh, it, it, it goes on and on, but it's basically a human being, whether male or female generically to include all human individuals okay so if all if this scripture is saying that all salvation has come to all men um has appeared to all men those two words boss anthropos all meaning of every kind everything not just a specific uh nation um what would you have to say to to defend that as far as your guys' belief okay um i would first point out that when dealing with the bible we're dealing with a a constitution that was made between a god and his nation um we have a constitution of america now that said that all men you know were created equally uh that same constitution said that black people were three-fifths of human beings so as we can see here when we deal contractually we can see predetermined terms right like if you read any contract it may identify the parties involved and then refer to them by in shorthand throughout the duration of that contract so that's what i would say is happening here and i'll, I'll explain why first i want to go to hebrews 12 and I'm going to start at 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he, saw, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So here we see somebody clearly identified as being disqualified from ever being able to receive repentance and salvation. If this person is disqualified from ever being able to receive of repentance and salvation, then we can at least identify one person whose salvation never appeared to. I want to go a little bit further now um, into Obadiah, because this kind of touches on what we were talking about a second ago and further into this. Um, this is Obadiah 1, and I'll start at 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. For Esau's violence against his brother Jacob, shame shall cover him, and thou shalt be cut off forever. It's just talking about cutting people off, exterminating people. I'm going to skip to verse 15. For the, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, any nation that isn't Israel, uh, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. As, as they have oppressed, raped, robbed, and murdered, it shall be done unto them. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. So it's talking about destruction coming to all the heathen. This is a prophecy that has yet to come to pass. The Most High God tells us in Isaiah that his word does not go out void. So in understanding fully that there are a prophecy after prophecy that's talking about the downfall of nations of people, to think that salvation appeared to these same people that God had already predetermined destruction for doom um, is 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 not it's not consistent it's not cohesive. So now, for example, if we go to Titus two, right? Titus two and fourteen, it says, "I'll start at thirteen, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us." that he might redeem us. So Christ gave himself for us, which is possessive, that he might redeem us for the possessive from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So who is this peculiar people identified as in the Bible? That's in Deuteronomy 14 and two. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. So we even see here that the peculiar people that Christ died for is being substantiated as being exclusively the Israelites and not in fact every single person because if Esau has already been disqualified from repentance how then can we honestly say that all people is actually referring to all people individually in particular okay 
So the scripture you used, Hebrews twelve, Hebrew the twelve. Um, I'm just gonna go through it real quick. A couple of verses before that, it says, "Pursue peace with all people." So, and then he he goes on to say, "And holiness without which no one will see the Lord." Looking carefully, lest anyone shall fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one more soul of food sold his birthright. So I, what I believe he was quoting here, Paul, which I believe he wrote Hebrews, he was quoting from the Old Testament, he was showing us how Esau, he sold his, his birthright, and it's clear that God does say that he, Jacob, he loved, Esau, he hated. But just like you know certain words, like the word hated, it doesn't necessarily mean they're hated uh, for all time, forever. Um, you know, but but for argument's sake, we'll, we'll leave that alone. But I want to, I want to, I want to um, uh, clear up something about this. Uh, there's a more detailed and 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 a, a a clear understanding of who our neighbor is and who um uh, uh basically it's a it's a it's a clear biblical definition of of neighbor as far as I'm concerned from from my studies and we find this in Luke chapter ten Luke chapter ten verse verses twenty five. It's quite a bit of scriptures, but I'm going to I'm going to have to read this so we can keep this in, in, in proper context. So 25 through 37 and I'm going to read and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him. He's testing Jesus. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? He asked. He basically asked him, what's what's your interpretation of it? Like, how do you understand the law? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, Jesus said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, this is a lawyer. Lawyer can also be, a, a, it was probably a scribe. That, that's actually the, the, the words that, that you, so he wanted to justify himself. He said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest, there's an Israelite. He came down that road. And when he, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He didn't do nothing. He had no compassion for him, showed him no love. Likewise, a Levite, this is another Israelite, when he arrived at the place, he came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain, so he, he didn't show no compassion, he didn't show no love. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. Now, I'm going to stop real quick. The Samaritans, as you know, they were a mixed people. They were, they were I, uh, some people don't believe they were Israelites, but I, I do. They started mixing. That's why the Jews didn't like them. The Israelites didn't like them because they started mixing and intermarrying, which you weren't supposed to do. So this is a hated type of individual. They're like the lowest class, I guess you could say. So this guy, he showed compassion. So so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii. Or the King, uh, King James Version says penny. I don't know how the word penny got into the King James Version. That's a whole other story. But but <laughs> but uh, uh, on the next day, uh, you heard of the Mandela effect, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to get into that right now, man. But but uh, there's some there's some stuff. I don't know, man. Maybe we'll save that for some other time, man. But, <laughs> okay, okay. But, but uh, uh, okay, so on the next day he departed, he took out two denarii. He gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three 
the, this is Jesus asking the lawyer or the scribe. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell amongst the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. He didn't even want to say the Samaritan. This guy despised Samaritan so much, he didn't even want to use the word Samaritan. He said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Okay? So I'm going to stop there. Um, so th this lawyer, man, he, he's professing to keep the law. And then Jesus, Jesus showed him he wasn't keeping the law, man. He, he, in fact, none of his brethren, he was showing him none of his brethren were keeping the law. None of the Jews, the Levite nor the priest, that's who they represented in this, in this, this text. The, it, the, the, that's who uh, they were representing basically Israelites. He was showing him, look, man, you're professing to keep the law, but you can't even show love, man. You can't even show love and compassion to somebody. Now, we don't know who the hurt, the dude that got hurt. We don't know if he was an Israelite. Or, or a, a, a Gentile. We don't know that. The, the scripture doesn't tell us that. But the Samaritan, he doesn't care, man. He just shows love regardless. Now, um, so, so backtrack real quick. Levi, he walks by him, shows him no love. Uh, and the one, and, 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 and the priest, these guys are the ones that are supposed to, uh, to know the law and to live by it, but they don't live by it, man. And the one, the, the one that ain't bound by the law, they, the Samaritans, they weren't really following the law the way they were supposed to. And, and this guy, he actually follows the, the, the law more than, than, um, than, than the, these Israelites in this text, man, the priest and the Levite. So, so not only, but, but this is what I want to uh, uh, bring out, man. Not only does the Samaritan help this man, he, he goes over and beyond, man. He, he dresses the man's wounds. He takes him to an inn, a motel, whatever you want to call it. He pays the innkeeper. He tells the innkeeper to take care of the man and that he would pay extra when he comes back from his trip. So um, if he was a Jew, if the guy that, that was hurt, if he was a Jew, it's like basically like, like uh, shame on them, man. They, they, they didn't even help their brother, man. They're not living by the law. And if, you, and if you were the Gentile, Jesus is saying, you should have helped him still. He's still your neighbor. That, that's what, that's what I, I've studied this text, man. And, and this is what I believe that this is the key here is love, man. Who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And, 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 he, sh and, and he shows how, how this is supposed to happen. And he, he actually shows how they're not keeping the law, man. And he gave them two examples. And they were both Israelites, man. So the key here, it's, it's, it's love, man. And, 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 um, and so that, that's, that's basically the, the main thing that I, that I want to bring out. Last thing, um, the gospel of Luke, man, it highlights, uh, uh, Jesus's love for, for a variety, different groups of people that they weren't esteemed in, in their, in, in his day, Gentiles, the poor, the Samaritans, tax collectors, sinners, lepers. These people, they were not esteemed in those days, bro. And I'm pretty sure you, you're you aware of that. And 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 in, in the whole gospel of Luke, man, if you read it, 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 it's like Jesus is showing, he's showing love to a variety of these groups. So that's that's the main thing I wanted to point out from this text, man, is is who your neighbor really is, man. It, is, 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 I believe it's not just your who you consider yourself uh, to be your kin. Or your your kinfolk, or the the people from your nation, or whatever, man. That we're actually supposed to show love, man, to 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 everybody. That that's what I believe, man. So, what do you have to say? Um, I who when you're dealing with uh what what crisis is bringing to Israel, is something that Israel had gotten so far from. Um. And it's it's called the spirit of the law. We have letter and you have spirit. We see Christ talk about it, and we mm -hmm. see Paul elaborate on it. Letter versus spirit. Yep. Um, and 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 that was a problem, and that's something that he was really combating. I want to read this because there's there's X amount of laws. Every single thing can't, you know, that's every single situation isn't necessarily spoken about in the laws, but through the things that are. We're supposed to understand the spirit behind what the Most High wants us to do, right? 
and I'm going to read this scripture. This is one of my favorite. Uh, Exodus 23, and I started four. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him. You see that? If you meet your enemy, this is a brother who you don't like, a brother you don't get along with, right? But you're in Israel and you see his ass done gone astray. It's your duty and your obligation to your brother, your fellow Israelite, to bring that back to him. You see what I'm saying? Irregardless of the personal feelings that you have towards the man. And that is what we see here in, in this situation where dudes are just leaving people for dead. There's also a law. I don't, want to get it, I don't know exactly where it's at. But it basically says, thou shalt not stand against thy neighbor's blood. Right? Meaning you can't just let that happen, let something like that happen to, to your brother. And, and this is something that they had, had gotten away from. And this is when I would say Israel is functioning on a religious level instead of a national level. What do I mean by that? Um, we come out of Egypt as the Israelites, period. Yes, we have lost edge commandments. Yes, we have a God to follow. But Israelites began to start saying, well, if this individual is not following our God, I'm not going to do what the law tells me to do towards him. Right. So then you had in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, a lot of Israelites get expelled. Then you have the Hellenistic period where a lot of Israelites start living after the ways of other people. So the descendants of those people, when they're seen, they're still shunned in the eyes of what you would call secular Israel that's there, that's in Israel, and that's like, nah, y'all left, y'all following other customs. We're not dealing with y'all anymore. We're not showing you the love that we're supposed to show anymore because y'all y'all basically aren't Israelites anymore. Y'all have made yourself Gentile. What Christ is bringing us back to and what Paul is bringing us back to is the fact that, no, they are Israelites. They still are do these, these things, and we need to render to them what the law is telling us to in the spirit of the law, which is to not leave them for dead on the, on the side of the damn road. You know what I mean? So that that's what I get out of that. And that a lot of that comes from understanding the Hellenization, especially of the nation of Israel and how especially the, the, the quote unquote state order, the, the Levitical priesthood was being so oppressive in, in expelling so many Israelites out of Israel for um, misconduct and then going and then following after the ways of Greeks and other peoples um, of that nature, which is whom we believe Paul actually ended up going and writing to and visiting um, during his mission. Okay, so so you be, you do believe that the, the priests in this text and the Levite, they were wrong for not uh, helping out whoever that, that dude would, right? Certainly, certainly. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'll... I want to point out real quick from Leviticus 19, 33 and 34. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, I think this is what you were uh, uh, talking about. You shall not mistreat him. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself. I'm not sure if, if that is what you were saying, but for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Is that what you were talking about? Uh, or is that because... No, what do you what do you what do you what do you believe about this scripture? Leviticus 19, uh 33 and 34. All right, I'll um I'll elaborate. Let me get Leviticus. Um first I'm gonna get Leviticus 25. And what is this? I believe, yeah, 30. Uh, Leviticus 25 and 35. If thy brother be waxing poor and fallen in decay with thee, thou shalt relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner. That he may live with thee. So it's telling you that your brother can be a stranger or a sojourner. What would make your brother a stranger or a sojourner is if his family moved out of Israel into another land and had him in that other land, and that's where he grew up. I.e., if um you have somebody from LA that moves to the San Gabriel Valley where you're from now, he's running around SGV, he's not familiar, he's a stranger there but you still got to show love. Our people all too many times have always, always want to come against the newcomer, like um, uh, amongst Mexican culture. Oh, they're, they're Pisces. They're just getting here from Mexico. <laughs> oh yeah, they're Pisces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's the problem? Which Pisces just mean what? From the, from the country. You see what I'm saying? Like the uh, Italians call each other pa uh, Paisano, which means Paisan, you know, yeah. you're my own countryman. You see what I'm saying? But uh, uh, amongst our people, oh, these, these are Pisces. Um, even in the Haitian community, when Haitians began to come heavily into America, a lot of uh, quote unquote African-Americans 
were resentful and, and would bully Haitians um, and, and things of that nature. So that's what I believe that's talking about. And I'm going to hit one more here in Leviticus 19 again. I'm going to start at 16. It says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against uh, the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. That's the scripture I was talking about. So oh, okay. talking about your neighbor, your brother, thy people, the children of our people, etc. This is where we see all them things being used um, interchangeably to being where even your own people can be strange to you or be considered um, strange. So, uh, and things of that I'm sorry, sorry. You're good. You're good. So the, the stranger really, you're saying that's not actually like someone it, from another nation. It depends on context. Stranger okay. certainly refers to other people. It depends on two things, context and or the Hebrew word, because there are certain Hebrew words that always refer to non-Israelites. Yeah, yeah. There are certain Hebrew words that refer to Israelites, and there are certain ones that are used either way. So you got to kind of look at the content. Okay, okay. All right. So uh, let's go to uh, another scripture that um, is pretty, pretty uh, well-known scripture, man. Uh, Matthew five, uh, verse forty-three. Uh, I'm going to go through 48, verse 43 to 48. And this right here, uh, I believe, this is what I believe, man, is that Matthew 5, specifically Matthew 5, Jesus, he's giving the law in its fullest extent because man kind of lowered the law, like, like you were talking about earlier. You know, God has a holy and righteous standard, man. His righteous standard is way up here, and man likes to lower the standards according to what they want to make it be and and so i believe right here uh there's a, a term i've used in the past where where jesus is he's bringing the law and he's he's giving us the law and it's fully the, the brunt of the law and he's putting the law on steroids man he's giving it it's fullest because at the end at the end of matthew 5 he actually says uh uh uh, uh be 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 there for therefore perfect even as your father is perfect, which I don't believe we could be perfect. I know you guys believe, you know, you guys use Philippians. Uh, I think sometimes we can do all things to Christ. And there's other scriptures you guys use. But um, I believe that this this text, man, Matthew 5 specifically, Jesus is giving. Uh, we're not going to get into all that, but he's giving some pretty, pretty hard things to do. And this is one of them. This is the one I wanted to bring up. Uh, uh, verse 43, he says. You have heard it that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, right? But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends, his, and sends rain on the just and, uh, and on the unjust. Uh, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren, only what do you do? Uh, what do you do more than others? Do not even the, the tax collectors do so? So he's telling them, according to this, and I, I'm just going to say, I don't know what you're going to say, but I would say if you consider the Edomites your enemy, here Christ is instructing for you to love your enemy. So what do you have to say about that? Uh, I'm going to reiterate uh, back to um, Exodus 23 and uh, start again at 4. It says, If thou meet thy enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him. If thou see of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, thou shalt forbear to help him, and thou shalt surely help him. Right? So this is still a law that is given amongst Israel to not do because there's enemies and people who had disdain for each other and even hatred for one another amongst the nation of israel so i believe that this is the instructions that we're being given um i think oftentimes our people have very easily forgiven so-called white people and other nations whom we show so much resentment to but whom we need to begin to love our enemies and forgive and things of that nature are one another i tell people this all the time um we just take a look at southern california um Nine times that like like certain people outside of Southern California, they really they don't understand what's going on. A lot of people yeah. think it's like there's like a black and brown war. What I said, the, the essays is killing each other. 
The blacks is killing each other. The Crips is killing each other. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's what's going on. So we need to start learning how to forgive each other. You know what I mean? And, th and that's what I think is the most instrumental thing in this teaching here. And, and this is how we employ it is to say, we done forgave everybody. The Arab man, the Asian man could come in your hood, open up a store, sell you malt liquor, sell you Newports, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's all good. You know what I mean? But but your fellow Mexican or your fellow black man, that's who you, hey, well, so, you know what I mean? You're getting hard with. You mean mugging. You know what I mean? You mad dogging, et cetera. That's who, we, who needs to understand this the most because I feel like this is where we're missing it the most as a people is amongst each other. I feel like we don't really have a problem with forgiving everybody else in the world, but it's forgiving your fellow Mexican, your, your fellow black man that, that we have such a hard challenge with. So I believe that that is the, the, the best way, and I believe that's what Christ was teaching us because I think that was a similar problem that he was having amongst his people 2,000 years ago. Okay. Uh, the reason I mention this, man, is because I, I've seen not just like with you guys, but um, I don't even know what this other camp's called. Uh, uh, what's his name? I, I, he's under YouTube, Adam Abbott. Oh, yeah, they call it Watchmen for Israel. Yeah, Watchmen for Israel. Okay. Um, and I, I've seen you guys sometimes, you know what I mean? But but the, these guys, they they go hard, man, on 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 uh on <laughs> on uh the white man or Esau or whatever. And and so that's why I'm like, okay, the scriptures, man, I mean, like here it says, love, love your neighbor, love your enemy. And there's a lot of scriptures too I could go to, man. First Peter uh three eight through twelve don't return evil for evil romans 12 and 14 17 and 21 repay no one evil for evil so even if they are your enemies man and they're what i'm most concerned about because i've seen even kids man they they these guys have have hammered some young white kids bro <laughs> and i know you guys are like hey they're white the hell with them man but but i'm saying if the scriptures say don't repay evil for evil what do you guys have to say like what are you you know what i mean like 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 because i would consider that evil okay if you're if you're trying to make okay go ahead go ahead no yeah i, I understand i understand why you would consider it evil um this is it it isn't something that we necessarily would would consider evil why because if we look take a look at all the things that they've done to us and all we're doing is talking it it, it always pales in comparison but i want to read this, this is jeremiah 20 yeah yeah it does it does I want to read Jeremiah 28 and 8. Uh, the prophets that have been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms, war and of evil and pestilence. And that's what we're doing. We're coming in the spirit of the prophets and we're just talking about all these various things that, <clears throat> that we believe the Most High God has in store for these people as a result of their current crimes and as well as the tab that their foreparents had left for them. So... With that being said, that, that's where that spirit comes from. Of course, but as you said earlier as well, the resentment. Well, we're, we're prophesying, we're reading the scriptures, we're, we're, we're coming to these conclusions that the Most High has these judgments appointed for these people. So that's what we're coming to. But of course, we don't ever want to, um, you know, we're not, gonna, we're not out there to try to uh, uh, violently attack anybody or, or you know, or, or things of that nature. Okay. Okay, so uh that that was one of the 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 things that like i used i just trip on man i trip out on that man because you know i'm like man like yeah and I'm, I'm, real quick, one more scripture i forgot about this one you know in in uh in the new testament and that's paul letter to the church at thessalonica uh second thessalonians um one and six it says uh seeing it is a righteous thing with god to recompense tribulation to them to trouble you. So God counts it as righteous to recompense that tribulation. So it, it where what it is is we just, like it says, Proverbs 11 and 1, a false balance is abomination. So it, it's really just about finding the balance. We see scriptures like 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6 about it being righteous to pay people back. But we also see vengeance is mine, right? So we understand that we are talking about the vengeance that the Lord is going to take prior to it occurring, but we're not going to take that vengeance into our own hands. We understand that there's a far greater force at work. Like we always tell people, we're not trying to go and get a bunch of AKs and start purging on white people. Why? Because there's a, there, which, people, which people act like we're like talking about doing, you know what I mean? Which is crazy. 
But it's like there's such a greater force that's at work, you know what I mean? Just like with any kingdom, Israel was in slavery in Babylon. And here we have the Lord raise up the Medio Persians to take the Babylonians down and instruct us to go back home and build the temple. So we have to understand that there's a greater force at work. We're just talking about the things that this force, which is, of course, the Most High God, is going to do. Okay. So that, that kind of, uh, I, I probably, I didn't want to go that long on, on that. I got a lot more stuff on that. But here, here's the main thing, man, the main topic that I believe. There, there's two of them. Maybe we'll save the other one for some other time, man, in the future. Cause we, we went in, you know what I mean? Some people, they're not going to want to sit there for this long. And, yeah, yeah. But, but I do want to... Uh, I, I, I do want to spend some time here before we, 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 we cut off, man. And, and, uh, and this is a, the, the question of, of pedigree, man. And it's what you guys subscribe to. Okay, man. So Israelites, non-Israelites. So a non-Israelite will fall under the banner of Gentile or Greek, depending on how it's used. Like in the New Testament, sometimes Greek is used as a Gentile kind of, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So... So my, my question, my first question is Matthew 10, 5, and 6. And this is this is a scripture that you guys, uh, Hebrew Israelites, um, uh, I guess this is one of your guys' main scriptures right here, man. Matthew 10, 5, and 6. So this is Jesus. These 12, Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I already know your breakdown of the scripture, but for the viewers' sake, can you can you explain what that what that means to you guys? We're saying that, <laughs> that means that who Christ sent his disciples to teach were Israelites who were lost, essentially. Okay. So and he's saying, don't go into the way of the Gentiles, right? And the Samaritans. Yes, sir. Only the Israelites. Okay. So that was a distinction that I wanted to make. So the word here, Gentiles, is the word ethnos, strong G184, which usually is used to describe a Gentile, a non-Jew. Okay, so, uh, um, and it could also mean, I mean, it also means uh, like nation or a multitude of, of people, but for 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 a great percent a great percentage that is used is used as gentile i believe ethnos like here it's used as as ethnos as gentile am i correct um i, I would say in that context it, it it um it can mean that for sure yeah because i know what you guys i'm gonna get it we're gonna get into that the hellenized aspect of it and all that but i wanted to just establish that because um uh and i I'm pretty sure you all more you already were this scripture, but I wanna I wanna uh I wanna get into it, man. Ephesians two, chapter eleven. Ephesians, I mean Ephesians two, verse eleven, and it says, "Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, he's talking about in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision." So he's making Two distinctions by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And, and he's talking about the covenants and all this, everything that belonged to Israel, man, because it's very clear that Israel was a nation that was chosen by God. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in, in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments containing ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two. This is another distinction. One new man from the two. Jew and Gentile, thus making peace. And he that that he may re, might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, 
thereby putting to death the enmity that he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. The saints, we know in the Old Testament, the saints were the, the, the saints of Israel. There's no, there's no dispute there. And members of, of the household of God. Sometimes it's actually talking about angels, depending on the context. But and members of the household of God. And having built been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place uh, in the spirit of God. So verse 11 uses the same word, ethnos, in the plural, which also, when it's used in the plural, it's, all, it's always denoting a Gentile or a non-Israelite or a Jew. And it's the same word that's used in the, in the Septuagint to describe a Gentile, a heathen, or a godless uh, person. So, and, you know, anybody not an Israelite back then was, was, a heathen, was a heathen or a godless person that was not worshiping the, the one true God. So, here, what do you have to say about this text? Okay, um, first and foremost, what we have to understand is proper Greek. Technically, ethnos is never used in plural. The reason why technically it can't actually be used in plural is because that's not that's literally when it ends in an os like that in Greek is singular. The plural of ethnos would be f f not f not so we can understand right. But okay. but even with that being said, I just want to point out like in, in Ephesians two here we have the word reconcile reconcile right which re is in reference to doing something again. So how are firstly people being reconciled who were never with the saints in the first place, right? But I want to go here. This is a uh, first Corinthians 12 and 2 because like it said here This, this is a beautiful scripture. It talks about Remember you in time past were Gentiles in the flesh. You were Gentiles in the flesh, right? So there's another scripture about that and this is a uh, first Corinthians 12 and 2 It says ye know that ye were Gentiles, but what made them Gentiles? Carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led what made them Gentiles? The fact that they worshiped the gods of the Gentiles. And to further prove it, we're just going to jump back two chapters in 1 Corinthians 10, and I'm going to start at the first verse. To the same, to the same audience here in the same letter, of course, Paul writes, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. So he, he's talking to the Corinthians, and he's identified their fathers as being under the cloud passing through the sea, verse two, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud, in the sea, right? So as we can see here, it says that their fathers literally were baptized unto Moses in the sea, meaning they came out of Egypt with the Israelites, meaning they had to have been Israelites. So then we jump forward back to 1 Corinthians 12 and two, and it says that they were Gentiles carried away to dumb idols, even as they were led, that lets us know what? That these Israelites were considered discontinued from Israel because of their idolatry. Real quick, I want to get uh, a prophecy of this. A prophecy of this um, in the Old Testament. I believe it's in Ezekiel. Let me just look real quick. Ezekiel. No. Well, this is <coughs> there's another one, but this one, uh, uh, Jeremiah 2 and 21. Yet I planted thee a noble vine, which he's talking about Israel, holy, a right seed. How art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? And he's referring to their idolatry, making them strange, turning them uh, uh, into strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. So this is all a part of the prophecy and the things that um, were said to happen to Israel. So it's all about bringing Israel back. Uh, right here, Ezekiel 14 and 5, and it says uh, uh, that I make the house of Israel, in the, uh, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. So these are, it's, it's basically talking about reconciling or bringing back the Israelites who had discontinued from worshiping God through idolatry and they were being considered Gentiles because they went to the lands of these Gentiles and lived as these Gentiles and worshiped their gods. That's going back again to um, 
uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, how it says that you, you were in time past Gentiles carried after these dumb idols. Okay. So, uh, of course, I mean, I, I, I strongly disagree with, with, with that. And the reason being, like 1 Corinthians 10 1, I'm going to just go there. Um, number one, when, when reading that scripture, we got to consider the new status. Uh, I mean, I know you guys don't believe in in that. Uh, uh, you guys believe that 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 these guys are basically just Israelites that were lost, right? So, my belief, the Christian belief, is that one must consider the new status under under the gospel of Christ, man. All because all who are in Christ, they're all one seed. In Galatians, it, it goes into not the seeds, plural, but one seed. And and all in uh, in Christ are one. So that with that being said, Abraham that would make Abraham and all them because it's an adoption. We all become all that all that was Israel's. It becomes ours as well, man. We we we've been adopted, and I, and I know you you disagree with this, and 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 that's okay uh, for now. But I just wanted to 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 uh, mention that um, that scripture, man, because first I know. It seems like it says, well, our father, when he says our fathers under the cloud, um, when you come from, from my background, belief, Christian background, we believe that Christ came for Israel first. They rejected Christ and, and nationally uh, uh, for the majority, and then they killed him. And then... He said, okay, I'm going to turn to another people and I'm going to, we can get into some of these scriptures real quick, but I want to, I want to just mention that. So he does that. And then he, he, uh, he brings in a people that were not even a people and in Romans nine, it talks about that people who were not even a, a, a nation. They weren't Israelites in other words, and he brings them in. So when this scripture is talking about that, um, it, it we got to understand it in the context of the new status of the believer who is now a child not only of god but a child of abraham who who, who inherits the promises of god he inherits the promises um through abraham and in galatians it, it, it goes into it uh abraham seed man galatians 3 16 and but but i don't want to stray from that i want to i want to come back to ephesians 2. ephesians 2 when it says gentiles here um are you saying this is this? I mean, I know this is what you're saying, but I want to I want to be sure you're saying that when this says Gentiles, it's not talking about Gentiles in the flesh. Well, well Israelites are called Gentiles in the flesh elsewhere in Scripture. So just because okay. the term but Gentiles here means it doesn't disqualify from being Israel. So I would say this is an instance in reference to Israel. Yeah. OK. How about when it says who are called uncircumcision? Does that does that mean the same to you? Yes. And if you go back to that, that all began to. Uh, begin during the time of the Maccabees during the Hellenization period where they okay. were either not getting circumcised or, or trying to make themselves uncircumcised. Okay, so now I just want to get into the, these breakdown of these words. There's only one, two, three, four, five. There's five words. Okay, Strong's 1482. We have the word ethnicos. Okay, that's national ethnic, especially a, a Gentile or heathen ethnicos, and it's used two times. King James Version. Then we got ethnos. This word is used 164 times, and it refers to a race, a tribe, especially a foreign. If you look in the blue letter, which we both been using, and it's usually a foreign, non-Jewish one, usually by implication, a pagan, a Gentile, a heathen, nation of people, okay? Then we got Strong 1672, Helen, which is a, a Grecian. This is an ethnos, but it's a, it's a, it's a specific kind of ethnos. It's a Hellen ethnos. It's a Grecian, a Hellen. Uh, it's uh, talking about a, a, a Greek. It's talking about an inhabitant of Hellas from Greece, a Greek speaking person, especially a non Jew, a Gentile, a Greek. Then we got Strong 1674, Hellenese, the feminine of Helen, uh, of, of the one I just said, the feminine of Helen, which means it's referring to a woman, a Greek woman. A Grecian, a non-Jewish woman. Okay, then we got Strong 1675, and this is the main one, man, right here, Hellenistus, and it's what you've been referring to. 
It's one who imitates the manners and customs or the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. And it's used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking of Greeks. So these are Hellenized Jews. This is what you mean in, 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 in that, the, you know, the, the Israelites that were, they were basically, they became Greeks, man. But they were fleshly the stock of Israel, man. But they were, right? They were, they, they were Hellenized, right? Uh, uh, so it's, it's, we have a word. This is all I want. That happened though. I, I want to say that, but when I'm talking about Gentile Israelites, it's not okay. it's not talking about them because there's a distinction between them because they still acknowledge the fact that they were descendants of Jewry. That's the difference. You have Greek speaking Jews, and then you had people who had entirely for generations had discontinued from. That's who I'm referring to, juxtaposed to Greek speaking Jews, because there's okay. a difference. Okay, so I wanna what I wanna do is just Try and prove with the scripture, with the scripture, that a Gentile and and there's so many references, man, that that speak of an actual Gentile. We're gonna go into a, a few and and see if maybe at least one. Cause here, see, okay, let me let me just come back to um how you said that here Gentile. It's not really referring to an actual ethnic Gentile, right? So remember the, the debate you had? My bad, the wife on the line. Go ahead. It's okay, bro. Okay, remember the debate you had with Jay, the producer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just seen that, man. Uh, uh, I don't believe that brother was, like, really prepared, man. But but I want to mention, man, uh, remember, you mentioned, remember, remember you guys had the little dispute about Elohim mm -hmm. and the word Elohim? Yes, sir. Okay. So... You pretty much told him that when when he used Elohim, he tried to tell you that there's different ways Elohim is used, which is true, which is what I believe. That Elohim was used for God, and it was also used for like judges, human judges, and it was actually used for uh angels in sometimes, right? So yes. so here, um, but you told him this is this is this is what I want to establish is you told him. That no man, Elohim means Elohim. Remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I recall. I recall. Yeah. Okay. So, so if if you hold to that view, if you hold to that view, that a word means a certain word. I'm just saying, like, gotta kind of be consistent. You understand what I'm saying? I can't hear you. I, I think the audio is gone. It wouldn't unmute. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with what you're saying. Okay. So I just wanted to establish that, man, because because sometimes, you know, uh, these words, you know, they, they, they have a meaning, and, and I do believe that they're used for different things. But in the Old Testament, man, we have a, a distinction between the tribes of Israel and the Gentiles, Isaiah 49 and 6. If we could just go there real quick, is Isaiah 49 and 6. Isaiah 49 and 6. Yeah. And it says, indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob to restore the, the preserved ones of Israel. Boom. That's a distinction. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles. That you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Okay. And do you, do you, what do you believe about this scripture? Is that talking about Gentiles? Ethnic Gentiles? Or what is that talking about? Certainly. Yeah, certainly talking about ethnic Gentiles. 
So why does it say that if you guys don't believe that that um that Gentiles can be saved, why does it say I will give you as a light to the Gentiles? I'll uh I'm gonna try to sum it up as quick as I can. Let me get um Here's the here's the easiest way. The easiest way I could <coughs> I could sum it up. Um, perfect. Yeah, uh, Isaiah sixty, um, and I'll start at one. It says, "Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee." For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Right? So that's us being a light to the Gentiles, but it's going to elaborate further on what it means, what the implications are. Lift up thy eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Salvation to Israel. And thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall uh, and and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So this is literally talking about us being a light, meaning when Christ's kingdom is established, all nations are going to come and surrender themselves and bow their knees to Christ, and then they will be taught the ways of Israel from that point forward. So that's what we believe it means to be a light to the Gentiles. When Christ's kingdom is implemented in the earth, all nations of the earth are going to be taught and understand these ways. But Israel has to be saved first. Okay. Um, I believe, I mean, I disagree with that. I, I believe that Israel was raised up to be an example and that he was going to use Israel um, to bring salvation to the Gentiles. That he was actually gonna provoke israel because they rejected him they were gonna, he was gonna provoke him to jealous to jealousy and i want to i want to go to matthew chapter 20 that gives us it's a clear example of this uh chapter 20 verse 1 for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner land the landowner is god who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard those laborers were the israelites now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day he sent them into his, his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went again. He went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the 11th hour, the 11th hour is around five o'clock PM. Okay. The 11th hour, this is late, late in the day, 11th hour. He went out and found others standing idle. I believe these are the Gentiles and said to them, why have you been standing there here idle all day? They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who he hired about the 11th hour, they each received the denarius. But when the first came, this is Israel. They suppose that each would that they would receive more, and they likewise received each denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Israel's been with the Lord since the beginning, man. They bore all the things. God gave them the law, all these things they went through, but they got they got upset, man, that that he made he made the last ones equal, man, meaning the Gentiles. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? 
Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful? It says, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? God is good, man. He's a good God. And they got mad because he was good to the Gentiles just like he was to Israel, man. And he actually, they actually started a little bit later, just like the story goes in the Bible, man. The full context of the Bible brings the Gentiles in later. It was a mystery. So the last will be first and the first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. So this right here, man, it, they got jealous. And this parable, he was speaking to them in parables. They got jealous because, because uh, the landowner was giving to the guy that started real late. He was giving them the same that he was giving them. And they got upset, man. What do you have to say about that? No, I, I would certainly not say that that's a reference to non-Israelites. Um, okay. As see over and over within Christ's parables, he's consistently getting on the, the leadership of the nation of Israel during that time. Um, uh, you know, because what, what's occurring is the Pharisees and, and, and the, the elite class of Israel was pompous and boastful uh, towards the rest of Israel. So when you see him get his disciples even, when he's getting the fishermen, and he's getting the publican and, and, and things of that nature. That's a little example of what that parable is talking about. But the Pharisees who have considered themselves as the, the, the vanguards of, you know, the, the nation's spiritual system are being now displaced by babes. That's why the scriptures say um, uh, in the mouth of babes, so I can found the wise. And then you even see in Acts once Peter's conversion is full and he's confounding the chief priests and the Pharisees and they're astonished at him. That's what that's a representation of more so than it being a reference to non-Israelites doing that. Because even in scripture, we can't see non-Israelites doing that. Okay. Well, if we go to the next chapter, Matthew 21, uh, verse uh, 43, 21, 43. Next chapter. And Matthew was reading to, it, Matthew was predominantly written to, to, to the Jews, man. And says, therefore, I say to you. The kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Okay. Now, uh, if we go to the beginning, man, we go to the beginning, uh, not the beginning, but starting at, at verse 33, it says, it says, uh, 21, yeah, 2133. Here, another parable. There was a certain landowner. Who planted a vineyard, this is God, and set a hedge around it and built, built a wine press in it and built a tower. He leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. That's what they've done to the prophets, man, since the beginning. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then the last of all, he sent his son to them. That's Jesus saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? And they said to him, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers. Who will render to him the fruits of their seasons and then jesus says have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone this was the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes therefore i say to you the kingdom of god will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it i mean if you don't believe that i mean come on it says he's referring he's referring right here to a uh, uh, when he says the, the the stone the builders rejected we know what he's quoting man and 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 they rejected him Israel as a nation they rejected him see, but and they killed his son that, that therein lies the problem to to say that Israel as a nation we have to understand it says and when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard of this his parables they perceived that he spake of them all of Israel wasn't being spoken of he was speaking specifically 
of the, the leadership, the elite class of Israel during that time. That's why it says when they heard it, they knew he spoke of him. So so what does he mean when he says given to a nation? A, a, he, he's yeah. making a distinction. That That's fine. See, when we, when we take a look here, Ezekiel 37, and let's we'll start at 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all Christ, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. So even as we can see now, Israel was not one nation at this time. Israel is two nations. So with them being said, it shall be given to another nation. This is also in reference to we're dealing with the whole other kingdom that had been displaced and was not even on that side of the world during that time. You understand what I'm well, saying? Well, how come it doesn't... My bad. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, finish your point. I was going to say, it doesn't seem like uh, there's no there's no uh, clear explanation of that. It, it, right here where it says the, the stone which the builders rejected, that that it's it's clear what's going on here man it's right, clear well, that let's take a look at here's what we have to understand because there is a great misconception especially amongst christianity about the death of christ what do you believe what on what wise was the death of christ was it out of jealousy or what no the death of christ he 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 came voluntarily they murdered him but that that god gave himself he gave himself willingly man of course he, and it says in isaiah 53 that he became the the soul sin offering man he gave up his soul as an offering for the nation of israel first man mm -hmm. and and, uh, and and it says it says in romans 10 19 that um that he will he, he that he's gonna provoke um israel to the jealousy the jealousy right perfect so look yeah Ezekiel, I mean, John, we have to understand the birth, the death of Christ is on this wise. John 11, and we're going to start at 47, because this is what we have to understand. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees of council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. So the chief priests and Pharisees, the same one who he's talking about in the previous uh, parables that you mentioned, they say this, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation, right? And one of them named Caiaphas, Caiaphas is separate from them one of them named caiaphas being high priest he wasn't a chief priest he wasn't a pharisee he was the acting high priest so it says and one of them named caiaphas being high priest that same year said unto them ye know nothing at all so he rebuked this entire council these same guys that christ is rebuking the high priest at that time rebuked them and he continued to say nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people that the whole nation perished not. So he said, this man needs to die for our nation. Now watch. And he spake, he, and this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. This was a prophecy, right? Of verse 52, and not for that nation only, but also that he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad, which is a reference to Ezekiel 37. What he's saying is through this man's death, will the reconciliation of our nation be made happen that's how this is going to happen so this whole situation is about that other nation is these other children of god that have been scattered abroad and this high priest understood from understanding the prophecies exactly what christ had to be put to death for and exactly what his death was going to um mean now i want to show this real quick just to just to prove this even further and that christ bore witness to the fact that this high priest in fact was a believer who uh who crucified him so like here one second i gotta get this old name this right it's in luke 23 i believe Matthew, no, Matthew 26, right? So when we take a look at Matthew 26, this is right before the crucifixion. Um, 
And it's Matthew 26 and 62. And the high priest, which is Caiaphas, arose <coughs> and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the thou be the Christ, the Son of God. So let's see how Jesus responds. Verse 64, Jesus said unto him, thou hast said, right? So Jesus knew about the council that took place in John 11. What proves that is the fact that when this high priest asked him if he was the Christ, he responded back to him, thou hast said, giving total credence to the prophecy that that high priest prophesied in regards to Christ, that he would die for the nation of Israel to bring that reconciliation. So that other nation that is being talking about is Israel that had been scattered abroad that we had already predicated in Ezekiel 37, Israel had began to function as two nations. So that's that other nation, not any other people. Because again, it says, I shall provoke thee with another nation. It don't say with all nations or with all people. It says with another nation, right? And real quick, uh, Isaiah 7 and 8, um, in regards to the northern kingdom, it says Isaiah 7 and 8, for the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin, and within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it not be a people. So this was that people that it was in reference to in part with these Israelites that were destroyed and were as if they were not a people. That's those people versus the ones who stayed loyal to the soil of Israel and allegedly acted as if they were following God and his laws. So that's who I would say emphatically that's in reference to and not all people. So how come in Romans 10, when he's saying, Romans 10, 19, he says, But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. Now there's a distinction here. here. Israel, he's, he's made, he's, Israel's as a whole, not as two nations. He's, 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 there's a, a clear distinction by those who are not a nation. Now you're saying, that Israel was two nations, right here is saying, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not nation, mm -hmm. and I will move, I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah very boldly and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, All day I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. So he's making a distinction here that it's Israel. He's not saying the two nations, or I'm going to bring you, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy through the other nation that broke away from you. He says Israel, he, he's, he's in context, he's saying Israel is Israel, man. He's really not saying. Yeah, now, and I'm, I'm going to explain why that's not true. I just read the verse because I already knew you were coming here. Isaiah 7 and 8, I'm going to reiterate it. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin, and within three, four, and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it not be a people. There is no other nation that you can find that's called a no people other than Ephraim, other than the northern kingdom. So when we say Moses give this prophecy, it is a foretelling, and the particulars of the prophecy come out later through the revelation of the prophets, that it came through the split of the two nations and or two kingdoms. You see what I'm saying? Because it doesn't make sense for him to say, by a people who is not a people, and the only people who are ever called not a people in the Bible is the northern kingdom of Israel. It's not anybody. You can't show me anybody else being called not a people in the Bible. Actually, the people, when it's, when it's talking about people, that someone that is a people, those are the people of God. Anybody that's not a people is actually people, especially in the Old Testament. Someone that, that they're not even, God's not even considering them. A, 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 a real nation in, in that sense. He's considering them heathens, man. Godless people. You know what I'm saying? But, but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll... But they're still a nation. The thing is, though, they're still a nation. Like, he still refers to the nations as the nations in their capitals and their deities and etc. Yeah, so they're still a nation. Like not a nation. The only people he ever calls not a nation is Ephraim, the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. That's the only people ever called not a nation. Okay, so Matthew 22, man, Matthew 22, the wedding feast. So here you would say that uh, basically, because he's taught right here, once again, he's, he's talking about if the, the, the invitation went out. He's talking about his people, man, to Israel. There's a wedding. 
and and they don't want to they, they were invited and they didn't want to come in so w- would you say there that that's talking about uh the the other nation that he's not mentioning here because uh, let me just read real quick jesus answer spoke to him again by the parable the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding the only, the ones that were invited to the wedding was israel whether you want to say two nations or split them up israel no. is still we got to deal with this in context we, we can't we can't deal with preconceived notion if you oh no no parable, i'm gonna just read the parable because it's going to be very clear by the end of it what it's referring to yeah it's going it's, through the preconceived talking about oh it's the people who was called was israel that's not necessarily true and if you read it all the way down it's it's going to elaborate on that yeah you you yeah it does elaborate okay so again he sent out other servants saying tell those who are invited see i have prepared my dinner my oxen my fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready come to the wedding but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm one to his uh business or king james version to his merchandise and the rest sees his servants treated them spitefully and killed them okay but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his army destroyed those murders and burned up their city the city in in uh in, in 70 a.d was burned up okay then he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy therefore go into the highways and as many as you find invite to the wedding so those servants went out into the highways and gathered all whom they found both good and bad and the wedding hall was filled with guests but when the king came in to see the guests he saw a man where he did not have on his wedding garment now this right here this is depicting the righteousness of Christ, man, that, that comes as a gift, man, the wedding garment, okay? You can't be in God's presence without the righteousness of Christ, man. You cannot be in, in front of a holy God without the very own righteousness that God gives you as a gift. Romans 5, 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Zechariah 3, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. There's a lot of scriptures, man, but... but but this right here he's, he tried he said to me then the king said to his servants bind him and take and hand and foot take him away cast him into outer darkness where there will be gnashing uh weeping and gnashing of teeth outer darkness he i know you guys don't believe in hell outer darkness weeping and gnashing of teeth if outer darkness if you're destroyed if you're destroyed weeping and gnashing of teeth that's something that you're conscious of you're you're you they're gonna be hell is a real place man and and people are gonna be conscious of uh where they're at man that that's what this scripture if you i studied this scripture man and 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 it's very clear who he's talking about if, if you keep reading like you said the pharisees then plotted on how they might entangle him in his talk see he was being very clear man they try to entangle him they and and they sent him to to their disciples the heroine teacher we know that you are true and teach the way of god and truth you know you do not regard the person of man tell us therefore why do you why do you you know he goes he goes on and he tells him why do you test me you hypocrites and he you know he he he, he basically uh you know he, he he tells him look man the earthly things are the earthly things these are spiritual things that i'm talking about man so uh, just real quick man the wedding garment that's a very key thing man the wedding garment a lot of a lot of people um that that profess to be first law keepers now nah, I'm, I'm not saying that you know uh, christians shouldn't follow god's commandments but god's commandments aren't specifically just talking about you know uh, the ten commandments or the old ten, the, it, rejoice always that could be a commandment pray without ceasing that could be a commandment there's so many things those are the commandments of god but it says uh uh okay people are trying to get into heaven by keeping the law man that's a whole nother topic because we probably we already went too deep into it right now man but but that's another topic people think that that they could be justified by keeping the law and you can only be justified by the righteousness of god man and it's a gift he clothes you with his righteousness so that you could be in his holy presence that's the only way man that's the only way you could be reconciled to god that's the only way you can be in god because god is holy man and we're 
we're still in our flesh we still you know we still fall short man so uh that i i believe that's what he's talking about is that when he says um the guy try to sneak in he tried to get in by his own righteousness man he was invited and then and then you know what i mean they rejected and then he tried to sneak in man and 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 christ wasn't having it god wasn't having it man so you know um this this scripture to me is very clear that the Lord came for Israel, man, for the nation of Israel. Once again, they reject. I know you don't agree with that. They rejected him, and he turned and 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 in Acts, in the book of Acts, I'm gonna let you speak right now. But in the book of Acts, it, it becomes very clear, man. In the vision that he gives Peter, he tells him, "Don't call any man unclean." You know what I'm saying? And then he and then he tells him, uh, he explains to him the vision. He explains to him the vision, and he tells him it. it it's unlawful for a Jewish man to keep company or to go to another. That's a foreign. It's not talking about Gentile. It's not talking about uh, Israelites. Or it, it uses the word allo, allophilos, Strong's G246, and it means foreign. And it's only used one time. One time, bro, it's used. And, and it's only used here in this passage. And, it, and this is where, where Peter is explaining to Cornelius. I, it's been said it's unlawful for a Jewish man to, to to keep company or to go to that of another of a foreign, not a, not another nation, not a Hellenized Jew, a foreign. And it's only used one time, and then he goes on to explain. But God said no. God said the Lord gave me the vision. He said I should not call any man unclean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, first. First, I want to deal with this parable, right? Because we know, I believe you read Matthew, correct? Yes, sir. So I want to just take a look at the same parable in Luke. Um, okay. Real quick, because this is this is where the point is. In verse 21, it says, so that servant came and showed well, what, what, our bird, what our chapter? So like, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Luke uh, 14, and I'm starting at 21. Um, so it says, uh, so that servant came. And shoot his lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor. So it's elaborating on who is being brought in. It says the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind, right? And that there's key, there's a key reason why these things are being said. We got to go back to the law. Leviticus 21, and I'll start at 17. Speaking to Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that have any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. So this, so there's a, a parameters upon who even has the ability to offer the bread of the Lord. But he's inviting these people into the, the feast, and these are for specific people, right? Verse 18, for whatsoever man he hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame, or he that is flat-nosed or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed or broken-handed or crook-backed dwarf, or, or uh, that have any blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scab or have his stones broken. So these are all the men who were not permitted to execute the priesthood of God. These are the same men who are, who are being called into this feast. So he's showing you that these same men who were stout, who were uh, without blemish, were these men who have mistreated and mishandled the, the wedding service and ignored the call of the Most High God. So now the lowly Israelites are being called in and that's whom the 12 were, which is the point that I touched on earlier. Um, briefly though, I want to, I want to um, go to Acts 10 because you referenced Acts 10 and, and, and number one, we have to get something clear. There were commandments of men that Christ was adamantly speaking about during his ministry. Those commandments of men began to supersede the actual commandments of God amongst israel in the new testament there is yep, no yep. commandment in the old testament that says a man that is a jew cannot keep company with him of another nation that's nowhere in the whole old testament right so when peter is saying that the reason why he's being checked on that is because that's not a law or commandment of god that's a commandment of men but we have to take a look at this um but the context, but the context there is dealing with salvation, salvation isn't, it? isn't it the context is dealing with salvation um, yeah, yeah. I, I, the context isn't necessarily dealing with salvation, but but let me let me build the point real quick because there's a key thing here that is often overlooked, right? Um, let's go to first Acts 10 and 34. Let's let's jump here first, right? Acts, Acts 1 Acts 10, so like Acts 10, 10 okay. 
It says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter respect of persons. This is some place where a lot of people will go in an attempt to justify or in, in, in thinking that this means that no matter what nation you are, uh, God is 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 going to give you salvation because it says he's no respecter of persons. But what also does the Bible say? Let's go to the book of Exodus 2 and 25. And it said, God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. So God also respects Israel. So what does it mean that God is not a respecter of persons? Meaning in judgment. That goes back to Deuteronomy 1 when it says, thou shalt not respect persons in judgment. Y'all shall not accept the person of the mighty or have pity on the poor. Just judge righteous judgment. So when it says he's not a respecter of persons, it's simply in reference to judgment, not nationally, because we already see that God nationally had a respect for Israel among all people, right? But there's another point in Acts 10 I want to hit um, real quick. Uh, uh, not there, 15. Yeah, Acts 10. If we go to Acts 10 and 15, we see this, right? It says, and the voice and the voice spake unto him the second time, and it says, "What God hath cleansed that uh, uh, that uh, called not thou common." So it doesn't say don't call any person common. It says what God has cleansed. So we have to now understand that what we're not allowed to call common and unclean are the are those whom in which God has cleansed. So now we have to go into the Bible. And who are we talking about, though? We're, we're going to find out who we cleanse. We're going we're gonna to okay. use to give us the, the definition of who has been cleansed, right? So we're going to go to Joel 3, and I'm going to start at uh, two. I'm tripping. This is my... All right, um, Joel 3, and I'll start at 20 to 21. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. So he said he would cleanse Israel, cleanse Judah. He's not talking about cleansing everybody. There's no people who we can substantiate biblically who have been cleansed, or there's no cleansing of all nations that have occurred. The only people who we can see biblically who God ever says he's cleansed are Israelites. Never anybody else. You, there's not a, a, a scripture where you can show me that says all nations have been cleansed. That means all nations have this eligibility. You understand what um, I'm saying? Well, let me show you. We don't we don't really have to go to Joel because it's right there in Acts 10. If you read the context, look at look at go go to Acts. Let's just go to Acts 10 and 9. Next day, no, you know what? My bad. No. Uh, Acts 10 and 25. So he says, As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter lifted up, lifted him up, saying, Stand up. I myself am, all, am also a man. As he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to him, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man unclean. Okay. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent. Okay. So if you skip over, uh, let me see. So he said, then Peter opened his mouth. Verse 34. In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality now that word partiality the word that's used is proso polemptis and it's strong's g4381 and guess what it's used only one time and the definition of that word is an acceptor of persons one who uh, uh one who discriminates so what is it saying god does not discriminate that's what he's saying he's saying god does not discriminate and he's saying uh but in every nation every nation and, and when it, this word every is the word boss that same word 
Okay, and the word nation as used is ethnos. There it is again, ethnos. And it says, in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. The, that word that was sent to Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And that word is the same word, man. Bas, see, same see, thing. Th this, is, this is so problematic. To say that God doesn't discriminate is, I mean, you, you do understand how problematic it is to say that, right? Well, why does it say, okay, I understand because because there's I, there's so many scriptures. I, I've but, explained it though. He, he, he's not, he doesn't have partiality in judgment. That's already been prefaced, but it, just like you like you already know, I have to read it for the audience's sake. Deuteronomy 76. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So as we that that's a discriminatory verse in the Bible that talks about the superiority of one nation above all others. So there's no okay. around the discriminatory nature of God's dealing and preference for the nation of Israel. And we already have also read Exodus 2 and 25 that said what I respected, that he respected Israel. So again, we have to contextualize what partiality is in reference to, which is in judgment, meaning he judges the righteous, yeah, but and the wicked, all just the same, no matter who anybody is. Okay, but if you keep reading, if you keep reading here, verse 45, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Yeah. Okay. And, and this, but we have to understand this happens earlier in Acts. Acts 2 and just like you said, in all yeah. nations, right? Acts 2 and 5. And there were. But right here it's happening to Cornelius. Oh, I understand it. So are you telling me Cornelius is an Israelite? Cornelius was a Roman centurion, wasn't he? No, no. Be, does being a Roman centurion make you not an Israelite? A Rome, a Roman, Roman had Israel. Basically, who who was controlling Judea? Who was controlling Jerusalem at the time when of this of this time? Who controls Roman? Hold on. Who controls uh, the city you're from? White people, right? Yeah. Okay. What are the no, no, think... cops? Excuse me. Are there Mexican cops in your city? Yeah, but we're talking about scripture. It, it, no, it, no, it's the, it's not about what I'm what I'm showing you is a very practical example of just because the Romans ruled, they used. So you're saying the so, Romans' so, entire military force was made up of mercenaries. That's who it was made up of. So it wasn't just Romans who were centurions. They hired. Okay, people. but we, we so don't just have and Hispanic cops, but white people are at the top of the governmental structure. Okay, people are going to have officers who are our people. Here's the thing, though. We don't just have, okay, I'll, I'll give you that, but we don't just have uh, the fact that Roman that, that Cornelius is a Roman centurion. We have the fact of this whole context of Scripture where he goes and, he, and they're, they're astonished that the Holy Spirit falls upon his whole household was saved, okay? And they're astonished because of the difference See, that yeah. it happened to them too. It yeah. happened to the Gentiles yeah. also. So that indicates that he was a roman this now this is all predicated upon presumption i'm going to show you no right? so, it's, it's in the don't, don't worry about it i'm, I'm going to show you in act i'm not going to leave Acts 10. let's just let's stay right here there's a lot of presumption here like the whole ideology that he's not an israelite is is um it's just unfounded in the bible right so let's just take a look here so here we have cornelius this is where he's mentioned they get the cornelius right so let's go to where Cornelius lived. And it actually says he was of an Italian regiment. Oh, yeah. What of, is an Italian? Of, of the of the Italian of the Italian regiment. Now watch this. See, you, you shouldn't have did that. I'm gonna show you right now why you shouldn't have did that. Watch this. Okay. Uh here we go. Uh, where where is my join at? Uh, yeah, here we go. Acts 18 to 2 and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy. So there's Israelites in Italy. That's there. So that's out the window. But watch this. Where is this city at? My fault. Okay. A certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius. This is where he lives. This is where he's from. Caesarea, right? This is where his family lived at. Caesarea. Right? Yeah, because, he, because at that time the Romans were living there. 
they were they were they were, they were keeping Israel. His fa his family's there. That's in Israel. Caesarea is in Israel. So this is a man who lives in Israel. His whole family lives in Israel. Yeah. But he's not. Yeah, if you move to when you moved to Texas, did your family go with you? Of course. Of course. So if, if he not not just his family, it didn't just say his mom and, and I mean not his 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 wife and kids. It says his near kinsmen. Hold on, I wanna um I wanna make sure we get this. Or I wanna um make sure I show all of these scriptures because it, it gets very, very particular um about this, and this is why see look, it says uh, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and called together his kinsmen and his near friends. So it's not just him and his family moved to Caesarea. His family and his friends who he's calling all live there. So these are Israelites. These are not just. Uh, he, How did that make them Israelites? He, he, here's why. Because it's in Israel and this is where his relatives and friends live. He's not. He didn't just move from Rome to Israel with his with his wife and kids. His people, his cousin, them, his aunties, them, and his closest friends, they all live in this same place, which is Israel. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean that they're Israelites. That they just means... They, they, why, why do all who, these people who, live in Israel? Okay, let, let me explain to you. Rome controlled Jerusalem. They, they controlled the land of Israel, bro, at that time. Of, of right? Course, Am I right? Of course they did. But Rome, Okay, then. Roman. Okay, so so normally, naturally, you would have Romans live in Israel. That wasn't they weren't just there. Not there. Not them and their close family and friends. That wasn't what was. Yeah, going but, but, but why not? A, a military, what is, right? Like yeah, but like if you have, I understand your point. Okay, I understand your point. But that doesn't mean they're Israelites. Hold on, but this doesn't mean that they're not Israelites. This the evidence points to them being <laughs> Israelites better than it doesn't. In this in this case, a man who lives in Israel, then you point out that he's of the Italian band. Then I show you that there were Jews in Italy, right? And even Acts two and five, what I just read, that there were Jews in every nation. But in particular, this guy is in Israel. So now here we have a guy yeah, in Israel where his family okay. and friends live, right? That happens to be a Roman centurion, but he is not an Israelite. I don't even see okay. how that makes sense. This is where he stay at. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and move on. But before we do from this from this Cornelius uh, uh, text, if you look in the next chapter, the very as soon as that story ends, Acts Acts eleven verse one. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles ethnos once again had also received the word of God, and when Peter came to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, the Israelites saying you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them he's talking about cornelius and his people but peter explained it to them in order from the beginning to say i was in joppa praying and in trance i saw a vision an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven for a corner then it came to me when i observed it intently you know uh, uh a voice came rise peter kill and eat but i said no not so lord for nothing common or inclining has into my mouth but the voice answered what well, God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now, this was done three times, uh, and it was drawn up to heaven, okay? The Lord did that three times. Now, when God does something one time, it's significant. If he does something twice, it's very significant. If he does something three times, he wants you to get the point. So, right here in the context of verse, remember, there was no chapters and verses before, right? So, when you put Acts 10 and 11 together, and you have the apostles and brethren in Judea, who heard that the Gentiles also received the word of God, ethnos, the same word that, that you said um, in the beginning when I first asked you is in Matthew chapter 10, where it said, do not go into the ways of the Gentiles. You admitted to saying that the Gentiles were actually Gentiles. Now, right here, the same word is used. Well, well, and I, it's I, clear I, to say, hold on. In that context. I didn't say. I know in its context. Here I'm putting in its context. Hold on. Here I'm putting in its context. And because oh, it's clearly saying are Israel ever called Gentiles? Uh I believe I believe sometimes they may be called Gentiles, but here in this context, it's 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 making a distinction and it says the apostles and brethren who are Judea, they 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 heard 
that the Gentiles also received the word of God, okay? And the uncircumcised, and they, 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 they told him, they accused him, you went into the uncircumcised? You went into the way of the Gentiles? And then, and then Peter explained it to them. So the only way to get a misconception is if you read something into the text without reading anything into the text. The text clearly says that, these, that, that uh, Cornelius, the people that Peter went into, were Gentiles. And it says that his whole household was saved. And that right there shows us that Gentiles did indeed come, uh, that, that salvation did indeed come to the Gentiles. The, the, no, no. the only way, the only way you can misconstrue that, no, and it, it, look at one more thing before before you before uh go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead okay one more thing in Acts thirteen, Acts thirteen a couple of chapters later man in verse forty four it says this, it says on the next Sabbath almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God, but when the Jews saw the multitudes they were filled with envy. Remember, remember the, the scripture about God causing them to be jealous from Romans and contradicting and blaspheming. They oppose the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and, and said it, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, meaning the Jews. But since you reject it, as it was prophesied in the Old Testament, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles, ethnos, once again. That's the context. For so the Lord has commanded us. He's, he's quoting Isaiah, the scripture I showed you earlier. I have sent you as the light to the Gentiles. And when you said, you said, I asked you, is this talking about Gentiles, ethnic Gentiles in the book of Isaiah? And you said, yes. Right here, Paul is quoting that scripture. Now, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed, to eternal life, believe. Yes. It, it, it don't get no clearer than that, bro. Come yeah, on. It, it, here, it is clear. And here's what you keep ignoring about Acts 10. The fact that it says, whom I have cleansed, call not common or unclean. What about this verse? What about this scripture? Oh, what do you have to say about this? I'm, I'm going to get right there. I'm going to go right okay. to Acts 13 and show you, and then go to what was quoted and show you how contradictory Acts 13 and the prophecy quoted is to your interpretation of it. Okay. First, let's go here. Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Yes, so sir. How, here, how are we going to understand the doctrine of the Most High? To precept upon precept. The key word in Acts 10 was, whom God has cleansed, call thou not common or unclean. And then he went on to say what? The only people whom are cleansed are what? Joel 3 and 20. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. You, can't you don't have to go to Joel, though. Oh, no, I have to because the stipulation that God showed Peter three times to emphasize the understanding is what I call clean, what I have clean, call not common or unclean. So the only people who we can ever see God ever call clean or said he will clean is Israel. No other people. So if the only people we can't call common or unclean are those that he called or deemed clean, and the only people we see deemed clean biblically by God are the Israelites, then the only people who that could possibly be talking about are Israelites. It can't be talking about anybody else. And the fact okay. that you use the terminology of Jew, you use Jew because Jew only denotes three tribes or a southern kingdom and not the totality of the nation of Israel. So if Jew is a nation, the other nine tribes that went and became the northern kingdom, they would be what at that time? Gentiles, because they're not Jews. They're non-Jews. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, right? Well, there's a whole group of Israelites, nine tribes of which, of whom you are included in, that were considered Gentiles during that time. And that's who that was in reference to. Now let's go to Acts 13. Okay. Acts 13 and the 26th verse. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whomsoever among you feareth God, to yep. you is the word of this salvation sent. Preach to them first. Verse, in this same yeah, he preached to them first. 
Now he preached again. Yes, you children of And then the he told them you rejected it. Now listen, now let's go to the aforementioned or quoted uh prophecy in Acts 13. Again, Isaiah 61. Let's go to Isaiah 61. If you read what you just said, hold, hold on. We got to hold on, right? Because I let you say a whole lot. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. Go ahead. You are good. And it's Isaiah 61 uh, about the light. Of, or is it Isaiah 60? My fault. The light of the Gentile. Become the light to the Gentile. Right? Okay. Isaiah 60, starting one again. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about all, all they <coughs> gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy, son, thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. And thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and, and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So this is what the light is all talking about and in reference to. It's talking about the conversion of all the riches of every nation under heaven being given to Israel. Why is this being neglected? Why are we neglecting all the prophecies that said the Israelites were going to subdue and take the spoils of every nation that's a well, part of the messianic prophecies that can't be ignored so if if you're going to say that this is for everybody now and it's been taken from israel and given to everybody else how i'm not saying it you're going to rob everybody else i'm not saying it the scripture verse 47 oh, it oh, says no no no. you're saying that's what the scripture is saying but i'm reading where the scripture contradicts that so you're under well, so you're saying so you're saying the bible contradicts itself no 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 i'm saying if what you're saying is true the bible contradicts itself i'm saying if what i'm saying is true the bible actually flows i'm together. saying that too i'm saying if what you're saying is true the bible contradicts itself because okay. right here so i, I want to understand how israel is going to subdue other nations that will be a part of israel can you explain to me how i can subdue a nation and and bring a nation into bondage pursuant to prophecy if they're a part of me just because they believe in christ look i i don't understand how you can equate that with what's clearly being said here and it says you you this is a scripture i read to you oh, I, and, and you I heard the scripture but here's what you're not equating and what you're negating you're negating prophecy after prophecy after prophecy in order i'm not negating order. nothing what, so, what i'm for, no no for example as before i mean isaiah 14 and 1 for the lord will have mercy on jacob and will yet choose israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place this is the israelite the house of israel and the house of israel shall possess them in the land of the lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So according to the Bible, whoever the Israelites were slaves to will become their slaves upon their salvation. How can people who are destined for slavery, according to the Bible, then partake in the salvation of the Messiah of the nation that would bring them? I'm going to show you, man. Because God in his sovereign wisdom man he can do whatever he wants okay and if he wants to choose a nation that uh wasn't a nation before that was not part of his original plan or not plan but his, his nation that he was raising up he can do that because he's god now right here i just want to mention again man i i asked you i asked you when i quoted this scripture i asked you is that talking about gentiles uh, a physical gentile and you said yes now i'm gonna go back acts 13 47 for so the lord the lord has commanded us i have set you as a light to the gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth <clears throat> and when the gentiles heard this they were glad ethnos when these people heard this why were they glad man because it's good news gospel means good news as you know the gospel of jesus christ means the good news of Jesus Christ. 
That was good news to me. When I heard it, when I heard the good news that I could be saved from my sin, man, it was a beautiful thing. And even when I was in jail, man, when I was fighting the murder, when I, when I, when I knew that God loved me still, regardless of my sins, I would, man, bro, I used to be happy in there based on that fact, man. Now I know that you say, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm an Israelite too, because I'm from the tribe of Issachar and whether that's true or not, um, regardless, I was still, um, joyful, bro. Just like these people were. And when you read this, if you just read this, say without any bias, if you were not a, a an Israelite and, and, and you were just reading this without. Uh, uh, whatever teachings you've received, okay, and you read and you read this in its proper context. It starts out and 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 this verse that you said, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, man. He was talking to them first, and when you fast forward, he goes and he says, he says, uh, so the Jews, the Jews, they, they became jealous, and and the Gentiles begged that the words maybe speak. Now, now it says they were filled with envy. They were contradicting and blaspheming. So this is Paul's response to that. It was necessary to you, to the stock of Israel, the, the physical descendants of Israel. It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it, here we go again. Israel rejected it. I know you say that they didn't reject it and that only uh, one of the tribes did. But here it's talking about them, man, the whole children of Abraham, all of them together. It was, hold on, real quick. It was necessary that the word of God should, hold on, hold on. Let me finish the scripture and then you can speak. It was, it was no, but you keep, no, no, I was going to finish. I didn't finish the scripture. You keep telling me not to read things into to what you're reading. Hold on, can I finish the scripture? Hold on, hold on. But you keep telling me not to read things into when you're telling me to, to just, how do I take it? As you're reading it, but you keep reading things into it, so no, you can't. No, I'm not. I'm reading the scripture. You just said children. Was, that's the whole Israel. How is it the whole Israel if eight but three tribes was there? there oh, so when he said, so the scripture you you read. See, look, this is this the is, scripture you read about the stock of Abraham. That's this, only some of the Israelites. This is scriptural abuse because all of the come on, bro. So when you say that all, this is for all of the Israelites, no, it's not. All the children of the stock of Abraham, Abraham. stock of Abraham. Abraham, and then you're inserting that that's what it's talking about again. All of these people involved are the children of the stock. And of whosoever Abraham. among you, exactly, whosoever among you Israelites that are there, this is who it's talking about. That doesn't mean every single Israelite was represented there, or every tribe was represented there. That's okay, not so. So when you're reading that into the text, you're okay, okay, okay. That was just speaking about some of them. So what about when he says that they got jealous and that he says that that to you I had to preach it first, and since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. What is he speaking about there? Again, we turn to the Gentiles again. Isaiah seven and eight. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is risen. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. Again, there was a whole nation of Israelites that were called not a people, a whole nation of Israelites that were entirely outcast. And here lies the problem. You're neglecting this. Let me go here. Hebrews 5 and 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a king, <laughs> but strong meat belonging to them that are of a full age. Like you said, just read this and tell me what you would think of it without any preconceived notion. That's not how the Bible works. You have to study and understand the prophecy. Oh, I understand that, bro. No, but this is what I'm telling you. So when it talks about, to, so you can be my salvation to the ends of the earth, what is that referencing? Old Testament prophecy, Isaiah 11, 11. Exactly. And, and, oh, Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, not everybody, of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Here's this the thing, though. Talking about. Hold on. When I finish. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they, Judah and Ephraim, upon their reconciliation, going back to Ephesians 2, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. This is talking about conquering people. And they shall spoil them of the east together. And they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab 
and the children of Ammon shall obey them. They shall be in subjection to them, and the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptians. See, with his mighty wind shall he that shall he shake his hand over them and shall smite it in seven streams and make men go over dry shot. That's a miracle that's seven times that of what he brought the Israelites out of Egypt for. So we know this has not happened yet. But he's saying that the salvation to the ends of the earth is gathering all the Israelites that are scattered all over the earth, bringing them together and uniting them for the purpose of conquering all other nations. We and Now, what's funny is you said, because God can change. Well, let's see about that. Malachi, well, what's funny is that I read you that scripture Malachi, Malachi, and you admitted for I am the Lord, hold on, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Why doesn't the Lord change? The Lord doesn't change the fact that he will not consume the sons of Jacob, meaning salvation pertains to the sons of Jacob, and he will not change on that. So you now asserting to me that the reason why we're going to negate these Old Testament prophecies for your interpretation of what's going on in Acts is literal contradiction to scripture because God I'm gonna, already said he wasn't going to change. I'm going to show you who the son of Jacob were. I'm going to show you who the son of Jacob were. But first, I want to I want to ask you this scripture, bro. Acts 13 and 47 is quoting Isaiah 49. I asked you earlier, Gentiles, mm -hmm. you admitted those were ethnic Gentiles. Yeah. So. So how is it now that those are 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 somehow the Israelites that were lost? I didn't I didn't say that the light to the Gentiles was about Israelites that were lost. I've never said that. No, I asked you the word Gentiles. I asked you specifically about the word Gentiles, mm -hmm. and you said the yeah. Gentiles who a light is going to are not the Israelites who were lost. That's what I'm saying. That's what I said earlier. Okay, so so there so, we have no argument. It does not always mean Israelites that are lost, just like it doesn't always mean non-Israelites. Yeah, so, so there's no argument. So it means nation. So it, it varies uh, uh, what it's talking about. So here, if he's using that word, and he's saying salvation to the end of the world, and that yeah, and that it, they were. I just read the Old Testament prophecy about salvation coming to the ends of the earth, which it pertains to Israel and Judah. It didn't pertain to anyone else. All right. Israel Israel is considered Let me show you, man. The sons of Jacob Israel is is when Israel's being referred to it's sometimes being referred to Jacob as a person, Jacob, the nation of Israel, and also that word is used for Jesus. Okay, that word is used for Jesus in, in, in the book of Hosea, chapter one. It talks about that, and then the fulfillment is in Matthew 2. Where, where, where in the book of Hosea 1 does it call the sons of Jacob? Uh, Let me show you. Hold on. <coughs> Okay, not not I one. My bad. Hosea chapter eleven. Okay, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Well, that that's not that's that's not um. Who is he talking about? That's not that's talking about Israel, but it's also talking about Christ. That's a Christophany. Yeah. That, that's it's not ex, it's not exclusively. That's why uh, uh, Proverbs ten to seven. Uh, I come in the volume of the book. So we see Christophanies elsewhere, but that doesn't take away from the initial context that it's referring to, which is to Israel itself being called out of Egypt. Okay, but if you go to Matthew 2.15, it tells you very clearly. It says... No, I, I'm not saying that that's not a Christophany, but it's not, it's not speaking explicitly and exclusively of Christ. Okay, it's, but if you put it right. together, a Christophany is a type in the... in, in Right? We're, we know what, what the... I know what it is, bro, but listen, Matthew 2, 15, also and there was until the death of Herod, that, that it might be fulfilled, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, out of Egypt, I called my son. Uh -huh. It says that that prophecy it's, was fulfilled. Oh, no, but is Israel also called the son of God? 
Yeah, it's print. It's a prince. Right. No, no. Israel's called a son of God, and Israel's also called out of Egypt. So all I'm saying is that that's not exclusively talking about Christ. That's all I was saying. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right about that. But I just wanted to point out that that this scripture was fulfilled in Matthew. It tells us clearly right there. It says it says that the that that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, "Out of Egypt I called my son." So the the only reason I mentioned that. Is because in Christ we are one body. Okay, He is the head; we are the body. And and there's so many scriptures, man. In Colossians, uh, uh chapter three, verse three, uh, it says, "For my life, for I died, and my life is hidden with Christ in God." Okay, so our lives as believers, our lives are we are one body. And First Corinthians, uh, it talks about it, man. It says. We are, we, there, you know, there, there, there's the arm, the leg, the eye, the ear, but we're all one body, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if we're all one body, uh, that means when, when it's referring to, to the sons of Jacob and all that, and I know you don't agree on this, bro. We, we, we're going to disagree on this all day long. But my stance is for the viewers to, to know that when it calls one seed, when it says it was talking about one seed in the book of Galatians, it was talking about Christ, and because it says it very clearly in the book of Galatians, it says it was talking about Christ. It's and if we are everybody else is adopted, everybody else is adopted. They were, they were. Look it. Let's just let's just go there real quick, man. Galatians three. Israel. Are Gentiles adopted in Israel? That's the point I want. I, I want to know about. Are Gentiles adopted in Israel? It says, "If you being a Jew living in the manner of Gentiles, not as Jews." Why do you compel Gentiles to live with Jews? Okay. Now, hold on. Oh, here we go. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say into seeds to, to distinguish. It wasn't to seeds like to, to Israelites and all that. It says to the seed, to Jesus, and as many, but as one, and to your seed who is Christ. Okay. Now it says, uh, uh, what purpose then did, uh, my bad. If you keep going, and I say, and I say that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant which was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, is no longer a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise, okay? That the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by under guard by law. Now I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip over to 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And right there, if it makes a distinction between male and female, that means there's not even a male and female when it comes to Christ. If you're one in Christ, you're one in Christ. That's okay. it. Well, let, let's see what Romans 9 says, right? And it says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So we speak in the truth through the Holy Spirit. Verse 2, that I have a great, and a great heaviness and continuous sorrow in my heart. For I can wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh nothing spiritual no adoption yeah. not in Christ. Yep. who are israelites he identifies as actual israelite to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants old and new and the giving of the law and the service of god and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh christ came who is over all god blessed forever amen so adoption, glorification, both old and new covenants, the giving of the law, the actual service of God, every promise pertains exclusively to the Israelites. The coming of Christ to the earth pertains exclusively to the Israelites, and the Israelites are over all God blessed forever, amun, meaning so be it. That's what Paul is saying. Paul has clearly identified the Israel. So to say that somebody's being adopted into Israel when to Israel pertaineth the adoption, Directly contradicted. Oh, I didn't say. I, I did. Did I say they were adopted? This is what I said. Well, you I said earlier. No, but but to say that they put on Christ—that's an adoption in Israel. And you no no the terminology adoption earlier. All of this. No. Happened, and again, it's saying according to the flesh, 
Christ came. So to say okay, that but, for anybody that's not an Israelite concerning the flesh okay. contradicts Romans. Okay. But if you would have kept reading, it says in verse six, but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Yes. Nor are they all children. Hold on. Because they, hold on. Let me finish. I let you read. Didn't I? No, no, Didn't no. I let you read. I'll, I'll let you do plenty of reading. We have but, to but so I can't read no more. They are not all Israel, which are. Let me keep Israel. reading. Let me bring it out. Let me bring it out, bro. Yeah, ahead, Just like, ahead. yeah. For nor, nor are they all children because they are seed of Abraham. They, he's saying, nor are they all children because they are seed of Abraham. But in Isaac, your hold up. I'm getting to the good part. But in Isaac, your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh. These are not. These are not all children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as a seed. Hold on. Or, this is the word of the promise. Hold on. Just that, like I read. What's that talking about? What, what is it talking about? It's talking about the children of faith. No, children no, that brother, come. Brother. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that. Let, we have to deal with this. Come on, man. No, no. You, what you're doing is improper. And, and children of the promise. Hold on. If, hold on. If, who what does he mean when man? he said? All right, all right. You, you have to listen. You have to pay attention. Watch what you're reading and, and look how. Look, look how you're not analyzing what's being said. Listen. Man, I've read the scripture a thousand times, bro. I know what it and means. Listen, and listen, and, and I know what it and means. Listen, and you haven't gotten it yet. And I'm gonna <laughs> it. Come I'm on, gonna bro. I'm going to prove it to you. Watch. Okay. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they the children. But in Isaac shall that seed be called. Right? So what is that talking about? That... Ishmael and all them other kids are not the seed of Abraham, though technically they were, right? Continuing. That is, they are the children of the flesh. Who's the children of the flesh? This has nothing to do with faith and not faith. The children of the flesh are Ishmael and all them other kids. The promise was passed down through Isaac. That's what this is talking about. Your name is Isaac. You should know this. That's what this I, is talking about. You're skipping over that kind. That's why I'm telling you to slow down. No, no, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean about Ishmael. I understand all that. And, and and it does go into in Galatians where it gives the both covenants, right? The both. I understand that, bro. And and you're, you're right on that. You're skipping You're right on that. You're skipping but, That's all I'm telling you. You're, you're, no, 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 no. No, but 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 what I'm saying is that's what I'm saying is that 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 that's not you're limiting it. You're limiting it just to that. You're limiting it to say no, no, that I'm, no, I'm dealing with context because He's going to talk as he goes here. It's to Isaac, not to Ishmael. Then he goes to it's to Jacob and not to Esau. So that's directly what it's talking about. But the whole point is going back to six when it says they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. This is why he has to write this. And this is why he has to write what he writes in Galatians, because you already see the children of Esau and the children of Ishmael coming and trying to take the covenant from it belonging to Israel. How do we see this with Herod, who was an Edomite? His yeah, father was dealing with, the, with Ishmaelites, and he was an Edomite and things of that nature, and they were trying to come and superimpose themselves on a covenant that pertained to Israel, which is why Herod conspired to kill Christ, right? So when he says they are not our Israel, which are Israel, that's what he's referencing. He's not referencing anything else. Nah, but when we come to, when we look at Galatians and it's talking about the two covenants, yeah, he, he's but, talking but, about Galatians. We still oh. hear here in Romans. He talked about, he referenced Isaac, then said, not Ishmael, Jacob, and not Esau. He's talking about yeah, literally because, who the because flesh I, was. That's because what he was talking Isaac, about else but flesh. Listen, bro, because through Isaac was in a concept salvation, not through Ishmael. Okay. Isaac was a chosen seed. Exactly. But he's talking about flesh here and who yeah. is pertaining to what flesh. He's not talking about anything else in Romans 9. But who yeah, I, I understand that. There's okay. no argument there, bro. I understand that we're in agreement. What I'm saying is this, is that when we put that, like you said, precept with precept, you got to put it together. When you put that with Galatians, it's talking about the two covenants, and he goes on to say one covenant is a bondage, mm -hmm. one covenant is a free woman. Why is the first covenant bondage? Because these, this is the keepers of the law. The whole context of Galatians is about law keeping, bro. And he's rebuking the Galatians because they thought that salvation came through keeping the law, man. And he said the law is not the law is not a faith, man. It's only through faith, man. And he said to all those who believe by faith, that's who's going to get saved, not through law keeping, man. That's another thing. You guys believe in law keeping and you guys say that if you 
you, oh, you're only going to get saved if you keep the law. You know what I'm saying? And that's not, that's why he went into this whole book talking about that. And he you gave know, both examples. Because you can't get saved by your own righteousness. But faith without works is dead and works without faith is dead. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But we're saying but, you're not going to be saved if you're not keeping the law. But keeping the law in and of itself is cannot save you without being coupled and perfected with faith. Your works are nothing. That's what we're yeah. saying. Not the law in and of itself is going to save anybody. Yeah, but but I, I heard you guys teach that that you have to keep uh, the law in order yeah. to be saved. That's not a requirement. The The book of James, chapter 2, everybody, everybody, even Christians. Christians misquote that scripture all day long. All he was saying is that if you say that you're saved, if you say that you're saved by faith, and there's no evidence, man. There's no evidence of that salvation in you. The, the, basically, your your works are going to demonstrate that you're saved, man. And he went and he used he used uh, Genesis 15, the same scripture that, that Paul used in Romans 4. He used the same scripture. They, they both used the same scripture about being justified by And it said, God accounted his, and he believed and God accounted to him for righteousness. That's it, man. He believed. And he was counted righteous. Romans four go it, it goes real clear, man. And it yeah, says, yeah, but, but but Christ also said, if if you don't keep the law, you're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. That's rare. Yeah, but the, yeah, but that scripture that I I I you guys use that scripture to 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 uh uh just like it's just like five seventeen. You guys say that that Christ didn't fulfill the law. You guys say that because not one tittle. He didn't no, say. We, it. We, we never said he didn't fulfill the law. He fulfilled. There's prophecies that pertain to Christ that are in the law. He fulfilled. Yeah, the yeah. You guys point to the prophecies, but you guys don't say that the law was fulfilled. Christ fulfilled the law on our on our behalf. He fulfilled the law on our behalf because no one can keep it. He's a sacrifice. Does that mean that you live life lawless? Shall we continue? No, of course Shall not. Shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? So if you can't no, continue with sin, then you have to keep no, the law. No, of course not. The law no, but but it doesn't mean that, no that. Yeah, but in Romans seven, Romans seven, it says that what inflames sin is a, is a, is the law. It says in, in First no, Corinthians. No, 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 no. It doesn't say that in Romans seven. Yes, it does. It does not say that in Romans seven. Yes, it does. No, it I'm going to show you. It says there's a law that worketh in my members. That's not the law. Watch this. No, no, no. I'm not referring to that. That's I'm not right. referring to that. I'm saying I'm referring to, to verse five. Let's stay on topic before we get into it. Okay. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law. The sinful passions are aroused by the law. How how can a law that tells you you will die because the law points your sin? How can how can something that tells you you'll die for this arouse your passions? That's talking about the law that worked in his members. That's not talking about the law that tells you doing this will get you killed. That doesn't, even make, that doesn't make a little bit of sense. Come on, First Corinthians fifteen fifty six for the for the law is the strength of sin. What does that mean? For the law is the strength of sin. The law is the strength of sin. Let's yeah, First Corinthians 56, and, and, 15, and I, 56. I, I, I'm going to answer this, but we need to stay on topic because we're way off topic. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even want to get into this either, man, but but uh, we could probably 15 get... 15 and 56? Yeah, First okay. Corinthians 15, 56. I see it now. Right, so we, that's why we have to... That's why we have to start from the top. First Corinthians 15 and 56. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law, meaning the law is what tells you that you get put to death if you sin. That's what yeah. that's referring to. Yeah. Second Corinthians, Second so that's, Corinthians that's what, chapter three. That doesn't mean that it, that's what gives sin its power. That doesn't even make any sense. Yes, it does, because without okay. law, there is no sin. All right. All right. That's fine. There's, let's, there's no knowledge let's, of sin. Let's, just go, let's, let's see what the Bible says about the law. Let's see Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so to sin. Right? So yep. you told the law is spiritual. So how can this spiritual gift from God be what makes people sin? I'm going to show you. Because if you would have read a couple of verses late oh, before let's, it says. Let's start up. V verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. And no, no. Start it. Start at nine. Start at nine. Good. Start at verse nine. 
Well, well, I read verse alive. nine. Well, I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Meaning, you learn that you're doing something wrong. Keep, and you get punished for it. Keep going. Keep going. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For wow. sin taketh the occasion by the commandment deceived me. It, the, the, the sin is deceiving you. you the commandment. Just because you. Why does it say that? You can't see. This is the problem. Watch this. Finding fault. And it killed me. It said that it killed me. All right. So, so what you're saying is you can live sinful. That's all you're no, saying. No, see, see, that's that that see, that's where you guys stray, bro. You just because just, just because of, we're no, showing no, what the no, ain't, saying. No, ain't no just because if the law is bad, that's what you're saying, right? No, now. I'm not saying the law is holy, righteous, no, I, I, and good. I, I, you man is bad. That's what you man. Mean. I said man is bad. No, man is the bad. commandment the inflamed is sin, bro. The law. See, this is the problem. Hebrews 8 and 8. For finding fault with them. Not with him. Not with the law. With them. Right? So we can't say that the law is done away with just because people are evil and wicked. They don't even make no sense. Okay. So how about when he says that, that he's dead to the law? What does that mean? That means you don't sin anymore. I don't worry oh. about the punishments for breaking the law if I don't commit sins anymore. Why so if you're dead to the law, if you're dead to the law, yes. okay, the, so so what does that mean? That means there's no, there, no that means I you're not. Told you, I just told you what it means. That means that I do not break the law, so I'm not worried about the consequences for breaking the law because I don't do it. First Timothy 1 and 9, which I read. So you don't say no more. What, what sins do I commit? I didn't say you did. I'm just asking I you. I don't break the law. First Timothy 1. So you don't sin? No, I said you sin. No, I, I, I do not actively sin. No, I do not. I'm not actively. Saying, I, I, I don't mean I'm not saying I never sin. I do that's not. what I'm saying, bro. No, no, but no, but that's not what I'm saying. So you can't argue with strong man. First thing, <laughs> knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. Our people are lawless and disobedient. So if you're lawless and disobedient, you need the law. That's what the law is made for. That's I'm, I'm actually right. glad. I'm actually glad you mentioned that scripture because it's very clear, bro. First Corinthians chapter one, I mean, first Timothy chapter one, it tells you right there. It tells you, but we know that the law, that the law is good. If one uses it lawfully, knowing that the law is, is not for a righteous person. Are you righteous? Yeah. That's why I'm dead to the law because. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. It, hold on. It if says, I'm not breaking the law, then I'm not worried about its consequences. But it says the law is not is the law. The law is not made for you. If you're righteous in Christ, the law is not made for you. The law, the law is made for sinners to show exactly. them their sin so when I, to bring them to Christ. So when I learned Christ, I had to learn the law so I could stop sinning. Where does it say that? That's what it just said. If you're not righteous when you first learn Christ, you're not righteous. Right? That's not what it says, bro. It says the oh, law is not. So, so you were righteous when you first learned Christ? No. Point exactly. What do you mean? When, when I what? Point exactly. When you first you learned Christ, you weren't righteous. So you had to learn righteousness. No, 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 no. As soon as I accepted Christ, he became my righteousness, bro. First Corinthians chap okay, okay, chapter okay, verse one. Okay, so let's 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 follow this example. If I accept Christ the same way you did, and I go out and kill people and do drugs and do all kind of madness, I'm righteous because I accepted Christ. That's such a problem, and this is exactly what you see. That, that's why communities that belief system. What you're no, trying to tell me? That's no, why. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. You, you put words in. No, no, you no, came no, no. up with, is, with this scenario. Is this is again. You Revelations 14 and 12, and we'll move on. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. You have to keep yeah. the commandments and the faith. Please. First John three, bro. I'm going to show you what the commandments of God are. First John 3. It tells you those who believe. Those who believe, bro. And 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 I, I told you we're not. Let's I, see what I, don't, not I don't refute about keeping God's commandments. Let's the commandments Christ and the law are two different things, bro. No, 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 they're not. And I'll show you. Let's see what Christ said out of his mouth. Matthew 4 and 4. Red letter. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, the laws, that the commandments are a part of the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. So that means every word includes the law. That's what Christ said man should live by. Anything outside of that is against is antichrist. No way around. Look, bro, 
Christ came to fulfill the law, which means complete. Christ said, you, you shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word. That includes the law. So to say that we don't have to keep the law anymore Man. is to say that you're not, that, that Christ. So how come you're not stoning each other for not keeping the Sabbath? You, you, you got, you, that, 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 but because Christ is a sacrifice. No, no, no. You live by every word that comes out of the mouth. Oh, come on. Listen, listen, of course, but Christ came and what? Pursuant to Deuteronomy 18 and 18, it said what? That a prophet See, would come, and that you're, prophet, if you you're applying what things, that prophet said, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, because this is all law. Deuteronomy 18 says, if you don't listen to what that prophet says, it shall be required of you. If Christ says, extend mercy and give a place of repentance, then we have to do that. Then we're not around stoning people anymore. That's okay. what it is under grace. Okay, so when they do that, giving them a space for repentance. So there's certain things that in the Old Testament you really don't have to do. But you just told me that every no. Instead of instead of judging people by putting them to death, they are granted a space of repentance. That's what Christ brought. That's what He taught. That's pursuant to Deuteronomy 18. That the things that Christ said when He gave examples of being merciful, turning other cheek, etc. This is what He taught us to do amongst each other. So that's what we do. We're not stoning people. Okay. Uh, we kind of did stray off, bro. I, I really didn't want to get into this because right. uh, that 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 issue. Uh, yeah, that issue of the law. It uh uh, there is a lot of confusion because what you say is true, man. Uh, about it's a misconception how people take it. Like when we say, for instance, uh, uh, Romans uh ten verses one through four, where it says that they were zealous, but but not. Uh, the righteousness that comes uh, by law. And it says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe, okay? Now, if I say that, it kind of seems like I'm saying, it kind of seems like I'm saying, just be lawless. You don't got to keep the commandment. And and, and I, I hear that, bro. I've had this discussion with so many, even Christians. But it's because the, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not broken down correctly and, and it just goes all over the place. And what happens, we start speaking over each other. That's not cool, man. Like, like you know, what I'm saying it. Put it another time while we're yeah, or we're more ready for it. Um, yeah, man. We 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 could we we could we could we say we, that for another time. We um, were Thirteen was the last play. Forty-seven was the last play. We was at yeah before we straight off. So we could we could uh uh we could start uh closing it up, bro. But the the there's a lot of things that I I kind of skipped over okay. because. Because we used we used a lot of time like in the beginning, um, but that that was a main thing that I wanted to establish, bro. Was was about the Gentiles and 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 um, as far as like I'm concerned, I I I believe, bro, that when the scriptures um speak of of Gentiles, like when it's clear, like some things are obscure in the in the in the, in the scriptures, obviously, and some you gotta study it out, man. You gotta you gotta rightly uh, divide the word and, and, and you gotta, you know what I mean? You gotta show yourself proof, man. You know, and, and, and that's what the scripture says, man. A lot of people, they don't do that, man. And, 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 and um, like I said, if there are certain things that I need to be corrected on, I'll accept that correction, bro. I'm going to go back and look at everything we spoke about. I'm going to look at everything you, you, you said, and I'm going to search it out, man. And I just ask that you do the same and that your viewers do the same. My viewers do the same because, um, it's edifying regardless, man. Regardless, it's clear we have we had this debate for a reason. You have it's called debate because you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe, and we leave it up to the audience, man. You know what I'm saying? Most of the viewers, I could I could imagine what the comment uh section looks like. You know what I'm saying? But uh that's fine, man. I just ask that for those few, man, those few that 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 you know they don't have the, they're not immature and they don't want just want to say, oh. This dude's an Edomite and he's, you know what I mean, all that. Like if they just, you know what I mean, uh, uh, just search it out, man. Look at the scriptures that we talked about uh, and and look at both things, both what you said, what I said, and then read the scriptures and pray about it, man. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom because that's what I did, man. There's a lot of things I didn't understand the scripture that I, 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 I just, I didn't want to accept it, bro. I didn't want, like the thing about the commandments. Now I understand that uh, I searched that out, man. I, I searched it out. Man, 
how how is Christ gonna redeem us and separate us to be a holy people? And we just break all his commandments and just do whatever the hell we want to do. No, nah, man, that's not what I mean when I say that we're not under law or that you know uh uh Christ is the end of the law or that he full that's not what I mean, man. I I I mean we're not like you said, we're not legally bound by that. Thanks be to God, man, by his grace that we're saved from, from those requirements. Now, a lot of people they 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 do want to go back. And, 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 you know, that's a whole other topic. But all I'm saying is com a commandment doesn't necessarily have to be uh, like the Ten Commandments. It, 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 it could be like I, I used earlier, man. We're, we're, we're asked to rejoice always. We're asked to pray always. We're asked to not worry. Be anxious for nothing. You know what I'm saying? All these different things to show love, to show compassion, all this stuff, man. Be at peace with all men, all this stuff. Those are all commandments too, man. And if we just... Separate and say, well, we got to go back to the Old Testament laws and, and neglect all this other stuff. Then it's, it, we're not really being, uh, I'm not saying you are. I'm saying a lot of people, they, they look, they, 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 that's how they think, man. They think that you could just pick and choose. So even Christian, they want to pick and choose what they want to. We want to talk about tithing <laughs> like me. Like, like, for instance, they push tithing. They push tithing. They say tithing was before the law. Melchizedek, right? Abraham tied to me. Okay, well, circumcision was also under the law. Come, you're not chopping your foreskin off. You know what I'm saying? And and, and they want to, they, they really want to subscribe to certain things because it benefits them. They want to, uh, churches, a lot of evangelical uh, churches, they want to keep their congregations in control, man. And they want to, they want to keep the money rolling in. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm totally against that. That's why, you know, I, I got a, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm zealous for that, man. I can't stand when people do that. Just like you guys, man. Like, you know, and, and I apologize if I did get a little, you know what no, I'm saying? We, we got a little heated, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, uh, uh, I, I appreciate the, the, the platform, man. I appreciate being able to even speak, bro, because I, I want to. There's some IUIC dudes over here. Uh, these dudes, and, and I use the scripture that you guys use, man. Uh, these dudes took off from me, bro. They, I was speaking to them. And they, they took off, bro. They took off, like, not running, but they, they were gone. And I was like, it's usually the other way around, right? Like, you got people leading you guys, and then you guys are like, hey, man, the wicked flee with no man pursue. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, but these guys, they didn't even want to sit there and talk to me, bro. That's why I appreciate you even doing this. You're one of the few dudes that I see that has the patience to do this, man. And that, that's a beautiful thing, bro. Just because we have disagreements and all that, it doesn't mean that, that people ain't going to get edified, man. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Christians and Hebrew is like, so I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that, man. And, and, and I'm thankful for that, bro. So, you know, uh, um, we could go ahead and, and, and close it up, man. Later on, some other time we could get more, uh, now that we got all the introductions out and, and all that, because uh, uh, there's some things I really wanted to get deep into, but uh, uh, I just wanted to, uh, bring out some main points and kind of see where you're at. And then, you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and follow up on this, man, in the future, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. We could, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to uh, further discussions, man. And I believe it was, it was good and, and it was edifying um, to the audience. So yeah, you could uh, you could give a closing statement, just a closing statement, man, and we could close out. I'll give one after you and we close out. Yeah, I just basically, I, I just want to reiterate, man, to anybody listening, some of you guys could be watching this a month from now, a year from now, is, is uh, don't believe what man says, man. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe what anybody says. If you look at this, I'm not saying don't, don't believe and trust teachers and because cause it, it helps, man. I learn from people all the time. What I'm saying is, is go to the word, man. Go to the word and, and pray to the Lord or pray to, you know, how, whatever name you want to use. And, and you search it out, man. You search it out. And, 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 and if something doesn't feel comfortable when you read it, don't try to uh, read nothing into it and, and twist it up, man. You read it for what it is. Study out the original language, the Hebrew and the Greek. Study it out. Pray about it. Talk about it. Go, you know what I'm saying? But don't just subscribe to what's coming out of a man's mouth, man, because man can mislead you, man. And, and I'm saying that for, for, for especially. Um, a lot of, a lot of my people that I believe in, I, I'm not talking bad about Christians, man. I, I, I love, I love our, uh, my Christian family, man, but 
there's a lot of deceived people out there, man. There's a lot of deceived people, and 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 I just ask that um uh you know you search it out, man. Be a Berean, man. Matthew uh Acts 17, 11, Search it out, man. Even if 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 you know what I mean, if you accept it, even if it sounds good, still search it out, man, and see if it's if if it's if it's uh 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 if it's if it goes together with the full context of the whole word of God, what the whole word of God says, not just what's said over here and over here. It has to fit in the in the full context, not just of the chapter, but of the book that's being written or the epistle or the letter and of the whole context of the whole Bible. Because there's a message from beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, there's a whole message, man. And that whole message, there's no contradiction in God's word. We were speaking, me and this man were speaking and bouncing things around. And it might seem like there's contradiction, but there's no contradiction in God's word, man. I know that for a fact, man. And I had to be corrected on that many, 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 many times, man. And, and so I just, uh, I pray, man. I pray that right now that, that the Lord move in people's hearts and in their minds. And, and that whether it's here today or 10 years from now, man, that, that, uh, that the Lord do something. If he can just touch one person, that's enough for me, man. That means I'm doing my job. That means this brother right here is doing his job. And that's it, man. God bless you guys. Grace and peace to you all, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. It was definitely, um, definitely a pleasure. Um, you know, of course, all praise to you. How about you? How about you? Most high in the name of the Son. Um, you know, me and this brother can be doing a million other things right now. You know what I'm saying? And instead, we're talking about the Word of God. Um, and and that that in and of itself is quite quite miraculous. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta give all glory. <laughs> Sorry, you know what I mean for that. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to further discussions. I appreciate everybody who tuned in and who, who gained something from this um, on either and all sides or in the neutral stance and who can learn about a uh, God and hear scriptures that they never heard before and perspectives and gain new understanding that. To that, the most high God should be glorified. Um, I know I titled this the way I did pur purposely. So people from these different walks of life to click on this and say, what the hell are these niggas talking about? That was about? good right there, man. I love that title. Yeah, what, what are these niggas talking about? You know what I mean? Damn, like, <laughs> the Bible, like what? Like, you know, but I, I did an interview a couple of years ago with um, with Monster Cody, and um, it got a lot of views. It was probably one of our one of my biggest videos I ever did. Um, unfortunately, it's on the channel that, that got removed off YouTube, but it, it got, you know, over 100,000 views. But just him being there and then him talking about different issues, you know, and then me coming in scripturally and, and, and throwing that into the mix, it got the word out to a lot of people through, you know, somebody who they kind of idolized in a negative light. You know what I mean? So we like to to use, you know, especially me, anybody who knows me knows I want to use every avenue to try to attack attention, attract attention to the, the most. High. Let's get the attention to the word. Let's do that. So, hey, all praises, man. It's all for glorification of the most high. So appreciate you, brother. Um, and, and, you know, we'll talk and we'll work out uh, another time when we can continue and uh, kind of get into some probably more specific subject matter and we can talk about things in depth. It was a pleasure. I appreciate every, everybody. Peace and blessings to the nation of Israel. All praise you. How about you? Shalom. God bless you.